30 seconds. The show will start in 15 seconds, and this is your last audible warning. Show. What about you, Marge? He's got steam coming out of his ears right now. Yeah, this He's looking wires. I'll tell you what I would like to have is a computer that works. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that would cost. <laughs> and I can only imagine what this computer cost. Well, I, I don't want to know a number, but was this computer, Rhett, was this computer expensive? Yeah. It's Again, it's not the computer. It's our Wirecast program that's giving us the biggest issues right, right. now. Well, listen, we, we, we get it, and we appreciate you two guys in there. I feel like you two in there have shovels, and you're throwing the coal right in the motor. God, we're trying. We're I'm, running out of coal. I know, right? <laughs> wow. You're listening, you're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. <laughs> Broadcast rights for the Bubba the Love Sponge Show have been granted to this station by the Bubba Radio Network and is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this production without the express written consent of the Bubba Radio Network is prohibited. <laughs> Honest to God, I feel like I'm dealing with kindergartners sometimes. Not, I don't say that. I'm sure everybody's taking that in a disrespectful way. Just the kindergartners are. The uh, Bubba Love Sponge Show, Wednesday, March 8, 2024. How about April? Uh, yeah, what did I say, March? <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever. Just shows you. Just shot out. Let me have you sent it yet? Uh, no, I just... <laughs> it, it goes to my phone, and then I have to send it to my computer. But we open the show with, and I go, let me, have you just sent it yet? And you go, no, I'm sending it right now. No, I said, so, I, no, I, I, no that's, that's, what, that's what you said, buddy. I I'm said se- I just got it. No. Okay, I'm sorry. S- Seth? Seth? Oh, yeah. Am I on? I, I, you should be. Yeah, sorry. It's my fault. It, 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 I can't no, hear No, it's my fault. Okay. Oh, there you there go. No, it's my fault. I sent the wrong thing to Lummy, and then I did send it to Lummy's phone instead of Lummy's computer, which now I'll just I know, but when Lummy tells me, yeah, I got it right here, I'm sending it, and he really hasn't got it yet. Or he just got it and he still has to convert it. He needs to tell me, I it's going to be a give me a minute or two. Well, it's my fault because my text message travels slowly because I haven't made my payment in a couple of months. So I mean, just for, <laughs> forgive me and uh, I mean so forgive is, Lummy and blame me. No, but Lummy, from now on, yes. I just want you to tell me this. Yes. If you don't have it literally ready to hit send and going to be to me in a matter of seconds, then tell me. Because every answer you, when I ask you, where's it at? You always say the same thing. I got it right here. It's coming. Well, sometimes you're literally 30 to 45 seconds between getting that and getting it to me. So from now on, instead of every answer, regardless of length, sometimes it's two seconds, sometimes it's two minutes and 22 seconds. When I ask you, where's it at? And you tell me it's coming. But realistically, you're still processing it, getting the right stuff from Seth, converting it over to where you need to send it, then get it to me. Hence, it's going to be a few minutes. Could you just say to me, it's going to be a few minutes? Yes. Okay. Because I don't think you've ever meant, said those words to me ever, have you? No, I have not. What do you always say? It's coming. I got, it, I, got it, I got it right here. It's coming. It's coming. When realistically, there's a lot of times that you don't really have it right there, and it's not coming to me as of this very second. But he's kind of like a hot girl who's getting ready. You know, like, hey, are you ready yet? Hey, are you ready? Like, hey, I'll be down in a minute. I'll be down in a minute. Yeah, you know, I'll then be there in hour, five. Then in an hour later, boom, yeah, well, Kate Upton comes down and you're just banging her. That's Lummy. I know oh, that. Thank you. But this radio show does not act 
uh, and is not engineered to act in its high wire act of getting time is you, of the essence. Yes, this we're not. We don't have you know ten <laughs> time minutes to get that because hot. the hot the hot bitch needs to put on her eyelashes yet. Okay, <laughs> but when she does though, it's just going to be hot as hell. I understand. But don't you hate that eyelash thing when they put on eyelashes? Isn't that gross you out? No, it doesn't. But really? what, what grosses me out is when it is Lummy telling me he's got it. <laughs> and, and, and now hold on. So then I, you have to understand, I adjust my monologue as if I'm going to have it. So I start setting it up, okay? Well, if it's if Lemmy doesn't have it and it's a couple minutes away, I got to sit here and tread water or find another topic to keep the thing, to, you know, to keep, to keep this show moving on. You know what I'm saying? I got to do a, I'm the quarterback. You got to pivot Lummy. is what I, you're saying. I got to do a check down. I got to do a check do down. Do you want to check, do a check down to penis pumps? That always seems I, to work. I, I don't know, but, you know, if it's two minutes out, if Lummy would say to me in full in full transparency instead of lying to me, no, it's going to be a few minutes. I got, you know, Seth, Seth screwed it up, sent me the wrong one to begin with. I'm trying to get the right one. Give me a minute or two. He said that. Then I'd be like, oh, you know what? Well, let's talk about the solar eclipse. And then, boom. <laughs> and then, no one else will be talking about yeah, it today. Well, then, no, but hold on. Then I'm not sitting here treading water. Looking for the uh, some African American woman besmirches the great Caitlin Clark about how her record doesn't really count because when this one woman played in uh, women's uh, uh, basketball, college basketball, they used a man sized ball <laughs> and they didn't have the three point line. So Caitlin Clark's a fraud. Okay, I, I, that's what we're looking for. So Seth sent the first one to, to Lummy to get to me, but it wasn't the video of said woman saying mm. this. And so so I, knowing there's a video, said, L- open it up. Again, this is all before the show starts, and, and it's not there. It's, it's an article. So I go, Lummy, I need the video part. Seth Jen then says, oh, damn, Lummy, that's my bad. Let me send you the video part. Okay, show starts. Bam. Seth, last thing I know, is trying to send the video part to Lummy so I can open up said program with African-American girl gets heat with Caitlin Clark. So I set the show up like that's where we're going. Ask Lummy where the new video is. He says, I got it. It's coming. Okay, I'm treading water because that's the topic we're going to open up with. And really, Lummy's a few minutes away from it. I mean, if we were, if I was to just timeline you through what just happened. If we were here to be intellectually honest. If, exactly. So, Lummy, next time the show starts, I think I'm going to open up with something. Okay. Because at the end of the day, Lummy, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm the pilot of this ship. Of course. I, I'm, the, I'm the captain. I'm the quarterback. I'm the general manager. I'm the, I'm the Jerry Jones. I own the team. I general manager the team. I coach the team. And I play quarterback. I mean, think about how rare – There's, I don't think there's – I think we maybe talked about it on Friday that there might have been one human being ever that did that. That was the great Curly Lambeau where he owned the Packers. He was the general manager of the Packers. I think he was the leading halfback, uh, and he coached the team. So, you know, call me Bubba Lambeau. But so, Lummy, if it's going to be – like, don't always tell me it's coming right up because I'm going to prepare – the show, the audience, the flow of the program, the timeline, if you will. I'm going to prepare for that said piece, right? Because I know you just told me it's coming, right? Yes. But realistically, it's not. It's a, yeah, it's so a just away. yeah. So just say, hey, hey, boss man, it's going to be a few minutes. Then boss man, me, can take another route. And, phew, a little offshoot and start talking about something else to get everybody engaged while you're like little Santa's little helper back there trying to find said video. Okay. Yes, sir. Then once you found it and have sent it to me, you can even organically interrupt if you'd like, if we're onto another topic saying, Hey, I got you to that video. Hey boss, man, I know you're talking about the total eclipse of the heart, uh, uh, solar gimmick today. (laughs) Uh, but, uh, I got, got you that video. Now in the back of my head, I can say, okay, I can continue with said topic, close it out, then flip over to the video that Lummy provided me, or stop immediately because the eclipse is pretty, you know, everybody's talking about the eclipse. <laughs> the eclipse. Uh, shmi shmi. a shadow. Yeah. Don't bust me up. <laughs> Here, have you, you look guys, at this wall and look at the seen, shadow in the wall. Have you seen all the schools and how pussified 
They've become and all the rule Hillsboro, Citrus, Pasco, Manatee. I mean, uh, all the rules that they're coming up with, they're letting kids out early. They're not allowing kids to play outside. They, you would think like this was a nuclear, you know, meteorite that was traveling across the country. It's just an, like, how can her, I mean, like. Well, I think the problem is that you can tell children a hundred times not to look at the sun and they're going to look at the sun, especially mm-hmm. American children because they just don't listen. And then so, sue the school because it's so on school grounds. If, <laughs> but, but if indeed, Dan knows. But if indeed you <laughs> Call really, me, 888 SOS <laughs> exactly. firm. If your kid's eyes are burned out through his skull but, because he was looking but, at the eclipse without protection on. at the but, school. Hold on. Isn't any day that you look at the sun, any day? It hurts. Yeah, but like you know, you can look at the you can look at the sun a little. You, you can you can look at it. A Apparently, little. when the moon is lined up right, the way the angles of the moon and the, the light bounces off the angles, it becomes deceivingly um, dangerous because it doesn't hurt. Like usually, if you just look at the sun, Correct. it hurts. All right. So the but rays if you look go at through, it, but you can right. You get the bad part able, without right. the the, so the warning saying, to your eyeball that says bad. bad so you're bad. saying that the eclipse is providing you a false sense of sunglasses. Yes, and you're gonna go up there and just look. Well, hold on. I mean, like literally, like will there be a you know 400 people in the emergency room tonight from looking at the sun? We'll no, it'll go tomorrow. away. It's like after a flash. You know, you yeah, just can't no see for a little deal, bit. It gets but we're, better. we're so stupid. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's, weren't they it, handing out special glasses last time? Or is yes, that, they, but, you can tell them at Seven Eleven. Oh, you can. But, 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 but hold on. It, I mean, like. Tomorrow, when the sun's out, one hundred percent, there's no, then there's no solar eclipse. Right. I mean, the kids, people playing, kids playing outside, people just doing, just people living outside. I mean, they look at if you look at the sun it, it, for a, an extended amount of time, it's not going to be good. It's, no, it's not. It's, it'll probably even be a little worse than you know. Let's say you looked at the sun today three three minutes. By the way, in Columbus, Indiana, which I'm going to try to have this. I'm going to try to go live on all of our platforms by like two fifty today, and I'm going to try to zoom sumo. Sumo lives in Columbus, Indiana, which when I show you the track of the total, it's like... It's right in the middle? Yeah, and it's going to last like three minutes, and you can tell... Wait, I thought you were just all over, like, don't bust me up with your solar eclipse, now you're going live for a solar eclipse yeah. review? Yeah, and I'm going to have him put his camera right into the sun. <laughs> I'm going to put Sumo, and it's supposed to last three minutes and 44 seconds. That's how long, that's how close, the closer you are to the path, the longer, and then there's his total, the total, the total, was it, total totality or whatever? Yeah, like, like a line of totality. There, yeah, there's a there's a map that shows you oh, yeah, where the, the where the sun and I'll get it for you here in a minute. Where the sun is 100. By the way, there's Columbus, Indiana. It's going to be uh it's going to be 3 minutes and so total completely dark because Columbus, Indiana is is right in the path. It's going to be completely dark for 3 minutes and 44 seconds and I hope that we're live on all of our various places, X, um, Facebook, Rumble, YouTube, Twitch, and for the, you know, for the, for the, we're throwing it over to Sumo. Sumo, you there? God damn, I'm over here in Columbus, Indiana. Hold on. Now, Sumo, just put your camera, I'm sorry, your iPhone. I know you're out, are you outside in the, in the, in the, in the driveway? Yeah. All right. So it's, uh, it's, it's officially, uh, what time is it going to have? It's, it's going to happen at 3.07. Um, and so I'm going to say Sumo. So at 3.07, I'm going to be live on with Sumo. I'm going to be like, Sumo, just put your phone right up to the, like, you know, facing the sun. Right? I mean, don't spoil it, Bubba. But what I'm saying is I don't think you could get blind <laughs> from watching it through on your TV. He's not. I mean, no, it, you can't. He's not your – I mean, yeah. I mean, Sumo could go blind, but, I mean, that's really – I'm going to have Sumo on there with his, gla- with his fat head uh, the glasses <laughs> – and sun now do sunglasses Dan protect you from looking at the sun? Normal sunglasses? Yeah. No, not enough. Or how one. about the UV ray ones? Well, I mean they're all UV, but they're they still don't. Oh. Apparently they don't. How I mean like again, a, I'm not like Mr. I think the Eclipse. only thing that really really helps like, like a welder's mask. Yes, that kind of light protection helps. Yeah, it's right. got to be that kind of that kind of protection well, is super okay. super super. We might dark. we may we may be blinding yeah, sumo masks. live on the air today. We don't know. <laughs> don't you have a welding mask? Eric 20 on the cash up. Should be uh, watching it through that. I, 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 so cool, I, I, Dan. I can't, Dan. I can't watch it and broadcast and broadcast. 
Okay, so I'm going to sacrifice oh. my ability to be able to watch it. But it's once, in, once in 20 years. What's this? Uh, once in 20 years. What's this What's this oh, character you're getting no, into? No, it's, just, it's, this, just, it's, this, such a, it's such a rarity, Bubba. No, I know, but this this little kid. I got, I got kind of turned years. on. What, 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 what is up with this... Uh, Beef, beef, fud. It was almost like a beef fud answer. I'm sorry. Like you were talking to, happens. like you're talking to Sophia when she was three. Goony, goony, goo, goo. Yeah. Well, I was trying to make it like a juvenile, a juvenile surprise because yeah, it's because well, you know, really who cares well, about just, this whole eclipse? You, you just you just ostracized me by saying. You can't believe I'm going to miss it. Yeah, but I said I it in a sarcastically can, like juvenile voice I to make it care. sound like it was like a big deal if you're a kid, but you don't really care. No, I want to provide content. Right. I would rather be on the air with a person that was live from the total path and, uh, you know, do that. Aren't That's, there paths yeah. like all over? I mean, couldn't you get a bunch of calls? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I could. Maybe, maybe, aren't there people chasing? But, but here's people- the thing. Calls are one thing. The video, but, like video, is the other. Yeah, I can't have true. everybody video in. So here's where here is the total eclipse of of path of totality. Yeah, the path of totality in every state, and and, and starting at Texas and moving northward. And you can see that you know San Antonio is on the on on the edge, and it looks like it goes right. Like these are just w- Waco. Waco, this is the, the Texas path of totality, you know, starts obviously at the border, goes through San, I mean, San Antonio and Austin are border cities in the far south of it. Now, if you're on the, like, if let's say San Antonio compared to Waco, here's San Antonio, and then Waco is right here. D- does San Antonio still have a little portion of the sun showing and Waco is completely dark? I think if you're in the yellow, you're good. I think San Antonio is going to pretty much get the full deal. Right. It just won't last quite as long as it would. I think like San Antonio would be like maybe two minutes and 10 seconds, whereas Waco, I've seen him as high as four. Mm -hmm. I've seen it as high as four. So there's how it. it, it, At least something good is happening to Waco because nothing good happens there. It's cutting through. It it looks like it's going to hit the towns, the big towns of San Antonio, Austin, Waco, Fort Worth, Dallas. That's the. The, that's the, that's the Texas deal. Yeah. Here's here's the Arkansas deal. Uh, it a oh, Little Rock gets it. L- Little Rock gets it, uh, and that's Jonesboro. I don't know Hot Springs, which I think is where Bill Clinton's from. Uh, uh, there's Arkansas uh, again. I think Arkansas. That's the other part. Of you Arkansas. know, people travel and like try to follow this, right, Bubba? Do you know this is going over a thousand miles an hour? <clears throat> Did you know that? Mm-hmm. I think, well, I heard I thought the Earth was spinning at that speed. It is. It is. So that's what this would be traveling. But at. I heard that there. I heard there's people that like try are like driving up north, like I don't know, like New York, Syracuse. I think, or, you'd, have like, have, I think you'd have to have a Canada. private. You'd have to have a private jet in order to keep up with it. I don't know. I, I, I was talking to a friend, and they said that a bunch of people asked her to go travel the, and watch the eclipse with them, really? but she was too busy. I, t- I don't know. Maybe can you just show up to one of these spots? I, I mean, yeah. You can show up to, for instance, it's going right through Columbus, Indiana. You could show, they're, they're saying a lot of these towns are going to be inundated with these tourists that want to see it. That being said, I don't think that a person can get on a highway and keep following it. I think you're going to have to be situated in one, you know, one city, watch it. And then well, that's, De- Dennis that, that's what that's that's your experience. Dennis Phillips, our stud weatherman here in Tampa, said he's chased the eclipse with his family four times, and that he says everybody should do it. Yeah, but he means he's just trying to get to an intersection on that line of totality. Where I think Bubba's implying, like, could you like get into a jet in Dallas and right. start like an like a half hour before the eclipse and just start heading northeast and then see the eclipse for you know maybe 50 minutes that's what uh, ne- rich new yorkers are doing yeah they're actually tracking it by plane or they're going it up in the air just to view it anyway I thought it was better as from the it ground. Cut, as it cuts through missouri not not a lot of big states uh, in missouri you got you got evansville evansville indiana uh, here's here's illinois we're talking about this like it's a cat 5 hurricane indianapolis um, Indiana. So that's that's Illinois. <clears throat> um, yeah, I thought they had Indiana. Here we go. Here's Indiana. This is where we'll be calling. Yeah. Lummy, we'll be calling right here. See oh, nice. Yep. Oh, that's perfect. Right in between the lines. And, and it's like look, a half inch off. Yeah. It's, look how 
I mean, that's pretty damn close. Bloomington, Indiana, Homa, IU. That's in the gamut. That's probably the biggest city, you know, in Indiana. I mean, it's 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 really everything because this is kind of a deserted part of Indiana. Not a lot of people go there. But Columbus, Indiana, which we'll be calling, has a, I think Columbus, that- Indiana, has a population of. Maybe like a hundred and twenty thousand or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But isn't hey, is Alexa, Cleveland there too? What's the population of Columbus, Indiana? Alexa, good morning. Good morning. On this day in eighteen twenty, uh, the statue of Venus de Milo was discovered on a Mediterranean hmm. island by a local farmer. His excitement drew okay, the attention Alexa, of a stop. naval officer. When he approached, go, shut, the uh, farmer uh, assured uh, him. Don't worry. Alexa. She is on. Shut up. Let me bing. Yeah, let me bing. 52,040 as of uh, January 2024. All right, so like 60,000 people live in Columbus, like the size of Lakeland. And so I'll be calling Columbus today. That's where we'll be, we'll be getting our total eclipse of the sun report at approximately 3 o'clock. Just and- bonus content, right? <clears throat> yeah, hell yeah. I can't believe it's going through so many major cities. You know, Dallas, um, Indianapolis, Cleveland. It's just absolute little rock. I mean, it's going through like some major, major cities, which is nice. You know, well, so yeah, because I mean, they're going to have that many more people mm-hmm. come in. You know, like there's going to be if you live, let's say, out a hundred and fifty miles from Little Rock, and you know, your your eclipse is going to be a pretty good experience, but it's not going to be the totality that Little Rock has. Mm-hmm. You and the family might load up, you know, and go, or or people might drive you know, various distances to get to these these cities of totality to be able to truly experience the solar eclipse. Now, you know, what what are we, 63% coverage? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so we, like, we're not going to have near the event that, say, Columbus, Indiana is going to have, right? Uh, yeah, no, probably not. We'll have a sliver of the sun. It'll look like still, it's half covered. It's still, sh- yeah, ours will be a half at best. Yeah, that's what it'll look like. 65% will look like half covered. It won't look like it's three quarters covered. Yeah. I said you... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I sent you... Um, Don't be like Columbia and tell me you sent me something. No, 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 and still, no. be there in a couple uh, New Yorkers are dishing as, out as much as four grand to view this from a p- private jet for like 15 minutes. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. That, that's very Dan. It's on brand, Dan. Mm-hmm. That's on Dan brand. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it seems go. like excessive to do all those things. Yeah, I mean... Hey, but just like, hopefully, you know, there'll be some... Because you know, it's going through like, you know, Southern Texas too. And hopefully there'll be some, you know, illegal aliens that are inspired by this. It's going and, right and over become Eagle Pass, actually. A- astronauts. <laughs> Man, I, that, that's one right of the... Right over Eagle Pass. They could fit a lot of Mexicans into a space capsule. <laughs> they should probably tell more them to look than at the white they people. Complied. Probably put an extra two or three in there. That's a beautiful PC-12 yeah, Pilatus. Cool. Oh, my God. It's a parachute. New Yorkers just dishing out as much as 3,500 on private jets to see the solar eclipse above the clouds, then oh, come back home. That's nice. Okay, great, yeah. Get out of here, you douche. Uh, you know what, if my neighbor came to me and go, yes, we'll let you know, I, d- yeah, I took a private jet j- to see the eclipse. But like, you're a douche. So, but if someone, said, Bubba, if someone said Bubba to you at, at 11.30, hey, we're going up in a plane, you wanna come up with us? No. Hell yeah. No. You wouldn't really? do that? No, hell For no. free? Really? Tired. Yeah, like, tired. Yeah, bones are tired. Man, that means I gotta drive. It means I Thanks gotta drive. To I, I yeah. gotta drive to the airport. I gotta wait for a bunch of my friends to get in this plane. Is it free or I gotta? I gotta free, go, uh, free with Wi-Fi. You so you can broadcast. This eclipse is going to be passing over major cities, right? Dallas, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Buffalo, New York. Scientists are saying this should be the biggest eclipse crowd for totality ever in North America. Everybody on Earth is going to, um, you know, be excited about this, but there will be seven people off the planet on the International Space Station. Oh, it takes dope. 90 minutes to get around the Earth. They will definitely be able to at least catch some partial phases and be documenting it from up there. That's cool. Oh, Come God. on, that's cool as hell. Oh, my ween, my ween's just <laughs> I could care less about this nonsense. Really, really. I mean, I can. The trick is the weather, right? Clouds popping up at the last moment, blotting out the entire show. Oh, can you imagine, man? You got clear skies, but this one big cloud lurking a little bit. This is a trick the aliens play on us right now when they just like to look at all of us, you know, just staring up at the sun with well, the stupid they, glasses on. Yeah, they got the facial recognition software going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> aliens. There's Seth. <laughs> 
aliens already got us on COVID-19. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, man, let's see if we can come up with some kind of disease that freaks them all out, literally divides them, and just, I mean, just absolutely freaks them out. You know, each week that goes by goes and validates. Like, I just saw a couple articles. I think I tweeted last uh, last week, Lummy, where they're like saying, you know, um, I- I- ivermectin is absolutely a drug that you can treat COVID-19 with that's very effective. Yes. Like the FDA has come out and said that. That I've I've but that Iver, was a quack. Ivermectum. Dan damn near got us suspended for life off of off of YouTube. And Twitch. Because Dan said, I'm a doctor, okay? I can write prescriptions. And I uh when I treat patients that have COVID, here's my little magic cocktail. It seems to be working brilliantly, and it's based on other people's experiences. And, and I didn't just pull it out of my ass. And Dan, you know, treated 500 people, and and with a very non-conventional, you know, what, not non-conventional. A lot of doctors treated it this way, but you were considered the mainstream a quack. media considered it non-conventional. You were a quack. Yes, I was. If you treated it this way, which was sometimes Dan threw some dioxycycline on it. He always had large amounts of vitamin D and zinc, IV mectri- uh, uh, ivermectin. Um, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes a Z pack, mm-hmm. uh, a nebulizer. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just there's Dan had, you know, had about seven or eight little th- bag, th- right. little I, pieces I, in his in, in his bag, and he would just enter, he would interject these various medications, all legal, based all, on the patient's problems, symptoms, and and presentation. All all prescriptions were either legal illegal by being prescribed or. Uh, uh, some of Dan's stuff was over the counter. Right. The zinc and his B6 and some of his other things that he pres- prescribed. So Dan, as a doctor, got on the air and said, hey, I don't know about this Plaxiquil or this whatever the <laughs> hell they're selling you right. and to make you get better. And I don't know that I would take the necessarily the vaccines. I'd kind of maybe lay off on that. And if you do get COVID, uh, call me up. I'm not going to treat it with the Plaxiquil or whatever they're going to do. And we're not gonna, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to do I'm going to do something very much, you know, not what people are doing. But I have an unbelievable success rate. I'm on an email chain with doctors from Harvard and Cornell and Yale and various other, you know, medical doctors and 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 professors and scientists that are using that are that we're on this 500 person, you know, uh, doctor or email chain, and we're all, you know, it's like an open letter, and we say like, hey, listen, hey, uh, guys, tried a little, tried this with this yesterday uh, and this, and God, I'm getting I'm getting good results. You know, all not just that. It was also here's a study that the mainstream media will not present. It right. shows that what we're doing is effective, but right. for some reason is being repressed by the mainstream media we because got, we got suspended because Dan's, you know, l- completely legal concoction cocktail, if you will, his COVID nineteen cocktail, which was not what. Big Pharma was trying to sling down your throat. Oh, no. It was completely opposite of that. Mm-hmm. And we actually got suspended off the air because we were going against WHO and FDA guidelines. And I wasn't saying, let's do it this way. I'm not saying, this is what we did for your mom right. last week. This worked. And she got better. It worked. You know, and, and man, talk about, I mean, now that you take a look back, now that you take a step back. And you look at just how they uh, we overreacted on COVID nineteen, how they ratcheted down our rights. I don't know how if they we made over a- we misreacted. We wrongly reacted. We reacted instead of proacted, and we didn't we didn't respond. We reacted instead of we responded. Went on, we went on the defense instead of the offense. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. We laid back, mm-hmm. put on our gloves, mm-hmm. hand wiped Willie mm-hmm. uh, in ninety five. Double, triple quarter, bent fun. over, spread ham, and let him take the way on us, and 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 let let him, you know, go to go, go town, go to go to your doctor or to your public or to your grocery store or your or to your pharmacist and get free shots. I mean, I think at the end of the day, if you're fully vaxxed by WHO guidelines, you've had I think six, sixty. No, no, I'm kidding. It's no, like six, six vaccines. I think you've had six. <laughs> 
think you've had six or seven vaccines because like, you got to get one, then you got to get the booster, then you got to get the new one with the yeah, booster. Yeah, if you got two in the beginning and one every winter, that's six. Do you know yeah. anyone who's done that? Yep. Yeah, yes. You know what? Uh, I mean, personally. Unfortunately. I don't know any. <laughs> uh, we don't because that's not the travels we, we, we travel in. Those aren't the circles that we travel in. But there are people, older people. Oh, no doubt. That are fully, va- like every one mm-hmm, of them. Mm-hmm. I think my dad gave up after like the first booster. He's like, all right, this is and enough. So, I mean, like we so just, I mean, but they figured out how they can control us. Yeah, like, that, that is controlling the media, just like control, a communist country does. They, they controlled it's ridiculous. Us. It worked. It, they sure could, did. it they does can, work. They controlled us and they shot down everybody. That's why you want some intellectual responsibility and, and integrity in the media. And when you have the media always so one sided, and it goes both ways too. But when you have such biased media and and they have an agenda, you see, you know, Big Pharma paid uh, the networks and the news stations and they sponsor, you know, tonight's news sponsored by Pfizer. Oh, Ivermectin, Ah, 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 horse paste is causing people to die. I, mean, was, I sent you no. a post. They wouldn't, was even, ridiculous. they wouldn't even say that this news thing was sponsored by uh, Pfizer. They would just write a check to ABC and said, we want the first three stories to be about how grandma got vaccinated and she's going to be okay. And then the next three stories are going to be about three dildos that didn't do it and took Ivy Mectrin right. and they're dying. Yep. Even though, and just go find some B footage to fill in, you know, to validate what you're like. A lot of times they would say operating rooms are filling up. News next. And then they would show these operating rooms that were completely jammed full and people waiting in the in the hallway. But it, it, it wasn't even like real time footage. It was B-roll footage from when they had like some type of natural disaster or something like that. It wasn't. Yeah, even, they show stuff from like yeah, yeah. nothing to do with what we were talking about. A lot of exactly. times they just would just be inflammatory. They would just find like the worst B-roll footage of people on gurneys and stuff like that. And that's what they would use for what they were trying to represent was the, you know, the emergency rooms of COVID-19. I sent you that post that you reposted uh, about the ivermectin stuff i know but oh, the, the the purge horn no, summarized right there, right there, let me? our whole response no i sent it to your messenger oh I, I, okay my messenger i pulled it up okay the, the purge horn that we would play summarized the world's response how much was yours it was compared? an emotional overreactive just just dreadful connotation that we got every time we heard about covid it was designed to scare us my treatments cost about a hundred bucks or less compared to what was the thousands and thousands and the, the the kickers the hospitals would get if they put you on event or on uh um or, you. I, uh, or killed you I, uh, yeah. follow our twitter by the way at the bubble army i'm super active on it and um i retweeted russell brand's tweet and it's and, and i i said this makes me sick to my stomach my show got suspended from YouTube for Dr. Dan Diaco discussing how he uses ivermect, IV, IV, how you say it? Ivermectin. Ivermectin to treat and defeat COVID-19. Fauci should be put in jail along with the head of the WHO and the CDC. He should be drawn and quartered. That's, that's what I said. That was responding to uh, Russell, Brand, Russell Brand's uh, opinion. Let's have a look at why the FDA are not allowed to call it. A horse paste anymore. The FDA has agreed to remove and stop reposting several social media messages suggesting is intended for animals and not humans. You've got to stop and stop repeating. Can we just occasionally on a Saturday say it's a little bit of a paste for animals? No, under no circumstances. Stop saying it. Paste for animals. What did you just say? So, I mean, we they actually had to had to have a ruling saying that the United States government has to stop making fun of a drug that's effective against the most deadliest thing they've ever thrown our way. Mm-hmm. They've misrepresented this drug mm-hmm. because it works. Mm-hmm. If you supported this drug early on, you were a quack. Mm-hmm. Dan damn near got thrown out of being a doctor. For real. It was touch and go. Dan was maybe having to lawyer up to defend his medical license. Oh, I did lawyer up. Can you believe that? Jeez. I said it's a waste for catching. Oh, so it also not only does the act and what they what they did piss you off, but now it pisses. What really gives you the f you is the fact that now they're saying you were right, mm. we were wrong, and you were right. Well, you know, Are you give me my two day suspension back on YouTube, bitch. It. The, the reason they they can't let 
people that don't really understand science and medicine become doctors is because in situations like this where you're faced with something that's not in the books, you have to be able to navigate the information, the studies, understand the significance, the bias, the distortion, and the true outcomes and, and the motivations for the studies, and then be able to understand how to treat a novel disease. One of the things that I really believe that doctors around the world forgot to be scientists they forgot to they be they forgot how to be a they, scientist they learned how to be a bunch of following the rules yep. snowflake mm -hmm, bitches mm -hmm. and they probably Protocol. and they probably got paid quite a, quite a bit for it yep they sure did people that had high penetration of vaccines primary care doctors got you bonuses you don't think dan they all got paid. you know you you are a plastic surgeon so the average public wouldn't come to you for this problem only the people that listen to the show friends and family would know that you can treat this not only can you put a new set of knockers on your mom but you can also you have the and you ability. can live to tell about it <laughs> you, but you know you you are a doctor and you know anything out, outside of there's not a lot of things you can't treat you know right, what i'm saying right but you can't and so uh, you know it, it, they it, if you went to the regular doctor who who's you know Purdue and far you know who's mm -hmm. and Moderna mm -hmm. who the, who the rep mm -hmm. the Moderna and the Purdue rep Dan I probably guess don't come to your office no they don't because there's no, no, there's no, no. not I'm not getting lot, lunches there's not a lot of medication no. that they make that you as in your profession need nope. so they don't visit you no but they do visit Johnny uh you know. Primary care guy. Primary care guy. Yes, they your, do. Your regular primary care doctor that's mm -hmm. supposed to be kind of a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. You take him there. You get your checkup. You know, if something's hurting, he'll look at you, maybe refer you to a specialist. But most people have a primary doctor. He's the first line of defense. But you, you know what, Bubba? I'm going to go one step further than that. The primary care doctor is not even the doctor anymore. It's his nurse practitioner or physician's sure. assistant. Absolutely. And those people who have abbreviated medical training absolutely do not understand how to be a scientist. So the most of the people that are actually seeing patients in America aren't the doctors anymore. It's these secondary people that we've elevated to the level of doctors, these nurse practitioners and, and physician's assistants. So, and the problem is they ain't doctors. People think they, they're doctors. They ain't doctors. And not. they don't have the intelligence and the experience oh. and the training to navigate complexities within medicine. Thanks, buddy. Um, thank you, Dan. I'm sorry. Very much. Yes, you're right. The primary doctor that you go to who's does get visits from the per Purdue and Moderna and Johnson and Johnson reps. You know that that's where they that's where they go. They go to the primary doctors. Mm -hmm. Your primary doctors are the ones that are slinging the initial medications that these big big pharma has. So they come in and they're like, hey, listen, you know, COVID nineteen, you gotta go with the vax, and then if they if they get it, you got to give them what's it called, Plaxiquil, whatever. Else. Yeah, Plaxilid. Plaxilid. Paxilid. That's what you got to do. Because we're and paying you to do that, and you're right billing now, listen, for it. And here's the deal: you know, every shot you give out, you know, it's a fifteen dollar extra willy. Uh, you know, every prescription you give out is another five. Boom, boom. I mean, that's you guys. That's how it works. You know, for real. Jeez. That's how it works. Absolutely, Monty, monetary incentives. And again, you have a bunch of people working and, for other people, and, and they know, don't have the testicles to to to. And then, to, and then the rep, and then the rep, protest. and then the rep tells the doc or the primary nurse girl, uh, "Hey, listen, not only do you get all these incentives for administering these drugs, but." You don't even got to pay for them. The government pays for them. Yep. So th all the vials that we send you that you normally would have to pay for, and you just get kickers based on volume, uh, you know, and if, if if you're paying, I don't know, $12 for a vial, you're maybe charging your patient 75 I don't know what the hell the markup is on getting stuff, but the, probably something like that. You know, Dan, they're not giving you their, their dead cost for the medications. Or, uh, oh, there's a kick. There's right. a kick. <laughs> right. So not only are you getting your standard kick, you know, because you, you that you normally had to pay twelve dollars for that vial, and then whatever you decided to sh you know, sell the consumer is is, is a. But the, you don't have to pay nothing for the kick. You got the free. The vial is free. So when you charge them, I mean, I, I saw clinics that were charging, like there were people that were, you know, charging for for COVID, um, um you know, relief. Or COVID, you know, they were weren't they charging with their doctors charging some money? Oh yeah, for that. Mm -hmm. 
And, even and they're it, able to bill. And here's so the if thing. I give you a shot for free, if I give you a shot that you don't have to pay for, the insurance the insurance doesn't even have to worry about, um, that it's supplied by the government for free, but the insurance company pays the provider to stick the needle in your shoulder. Yeah. You're triple dipping. You really are. That's gross. It's just, and so. It's gross. And, but now they've come back and said, hey, uh, you know, horse, hor, her, uh, horse wormer deal, the Ivy Mectrin that we tried to make everybody that, you know, what, that used it a bozo and that we made CVS and Walgreens, you know, made it difficult for doctors to prescribe it. And then we're going to jack the price up. It, my first time I got COVID, Dan, the Ivy Mectrin cost me, I think, $74. The second time I got uh, COVID, they had three times, it was 300. They had, wow. they, they, yeah, I mean, you know, the compounding pharmacies are, they ain't stupid. They ain't stupid. What about the third time? Third, I don't even know that I did anything about it the third time. Is that the one you almost died? Gulls? No, I didn't almost die on any of them. I heard you were close. Oh, bull. My first one was was a uh, it was was tough, but not near death. But you got to understand, you know, Boa had a couple of risk factors, too. Yeah. Such as? Fat. Over 50? Yeah. Court said the FDA's role is not to provide personalized medical advice. Awesome. Meanwhile, they did. They did at, during the COVID deal. They, they didn't do advice. They did insistence. They did mandates. Mandates. Isn't it? That's not the FDA's role even to provide personal medicalized advice. They're meant to actually oversee clinical trials. Did Russell Brand, did he get out, get out of all those allegations they made about They're him? fading away. Good. Regulate pharmaceutical companies from whom they also receive their funding. However, the FDA still does not recommend it for COVID treatment, saying there is danger of excessive doses. Trying to get that last bit in. But I will say, even though it's not a horse paste, you could take too much of it and then your butt would clog up and no one would like you. And, oh, and by the way, you could take too much of anything. Stop being childish about. Stay free. See All right. So that was that was Russell Brand's take on it. I, I, I feel I feel the same way. We so overreacted on COVID-19. I mean, taking a step back at it now. Let me, didn't we have Brian in here on Thursday? And he was like, yeah, I kind of, and he was the most crazy of all. Remember, he was, yes, he was. 409ing his Amazon packages. And he would, <laughs> I mean, he would literally go out to the porch with an N95 mask and dish gloves and, and, and like 409 sprayer and towels and wipe, you know, spray down his Amazon boxes for in fear of all the ha- people that touched that box prior to getting to your porch. Uh, you know, one of them might have had the COVID COVID strain. I think he still does that during cold and flu season. I think so too. I mean, what? I mean, that? I mean, really? He did. Well, I mean, he did have he he had four he had four you know elders that he didn't want to kill. Yeah. I mean, I think he wanted to kill one of them, but yeah. you know he didn't he didn't, didn't have a choice. So <laughs> right. it was yeah. tough, tough to single the one out without not looking <laughs> right guilty. without collateral damage. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. without looking guilty, you know, taking one out individually kind of tough to get around. Hello, who's this? Hey, Bob, uh, Super Fab Light. Hey, uh, hey, Super Fab Light, how you doing? Hey, hey. Hey, no problem. No problem. Oh, I'm good. Um, no, they told us that uh, in Walmart that we we're supposed to get like a t- millions of people over near Buffalo uh, today because of the eclipse. Yeah, because I think Buffalo is one of the major major cities as far as it's going to have total to oh, you know total totality or something. Oh yeah, then, yeah. So people yeah, that drive wanna, people that drive trucks and stuff like that around the Buffalo area, you like on the highways, it's going to be it's going to be a traffic jam all day in all these you know, these total totality cities so be ready columbus indiana and Terre Haute, indiana and buffalo uh new york and san antonio texas and dallas texas all these major cities that the the, that the total eclipse will roll through for i've seen as low as t- on t- on total totality i've seen as low as like 245 and i've seen as high as like if you're like one of the cities that goes right over it's up to it's up to four minutes mm-hmm it can last up to four minutes based on how close you are to the you know to the to the deal. So, yeah, Bubba Light, have your patience on today because you're probably uh, be dealing with a bunch of dildos trying to watch the uh, especially in the three o'clock or. Well, so. you can just stop in the middle of the road and watch this. I mean, you know, well, some people will though. <laughs> they'll yeah. just pull over and just oh, yeah. start watching it. Seriously, <laughs> they'll pull over on the highway mm-hmm. and they'll and they'll just lean against the the guardrail and just start watching it. Yeah, just like during the air show or a rocket launch, people just pull their just, ass over so and just start be looking. Super fat bubble light. Be careful, Kessa, in case that you know 
that old timer in front of you locks up the brakes because it's three fifteen and he's fixing to miss the eclipse. Okay. <laughs> they said there were oh, seven. No I was. I wasn't sure if you uh, got your uh, Dyson faucet. We got our what? Dyson? The, the, the faucet. I, I know. Is it a waving faucet? Have we got, have we got it yeah, yet? Yeah, it's here. It's in the kitchen. Okay, you know what? I, I think we got it. I just got to take a look at it and get it installed. Okay, and then I wasn't sure uh, Dan wasn't there uh, when you guys were talking about the uh, blood clots on Friday. Oh, about how the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, talk, we'll talk to Dan about that. I'll, I'll ask him about that and see if he's heard about that, okay? Oh, no problem. Thank you. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Super, ba- super fat Bubba Light. Love him. Royalty. Yeah, Dan, I think it was Dan, let me did I get into the morticians and how they You do you mention it, but we didn't really get into it. Yeah, maybe we can get into that. Dan, I I, I saw I forget I was on well, of course I was on Twitter, because I live on Twitter. And I'm working on getting our numbers built up. Um but I, I saw on Twitter. I, thank you. I, I saw <laughs> I saw some type of article that said all these morticians uh, are like hundreds of them have reported uh, to whoever that they can't even embalm bodies because the the people that are fully vaccinated have their blood while they die and before it gets before they can embalm you which i'm assuming dan a dead body the progression goes it goes to the medical examiner there is or is not an autopsy and then if there's not an autopsy if there is an autopsy, do they do it they doesn't drink? always go to the medical examiner. It just sometimes goes straight to the mortician. If it's an old person who's expected to die and they just finally take their last breath, it doesn't go to the medical examiner. It goes just straight to the uh, okay, funeral so the, home. So I sent you the article with like the picture. When dad died, he went to the funeral home. No, there, there wasn't like a, an autopsy. We weren't worried about you know anything untoward. It was an old guy that died. And they just sent him right to the mm-hmm. deal. All right. Well, let me let me so I don't get too far behind. We'll come back with this. Okay. And I, I gotta get I gotta get Dan's. Dan's take on this and if he's heard it or not, okay? Sweet. All right, back. Yes, this is a daily telethon. We gotta keep the lights on somehow. So don't forget PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo. All at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Bubba the Love Sponge. We'll be back after this. Big bug, good morning, Talgo. Statutory can sue. You have to be a, a, a surviving, the statutory survivor for malpractice has to be a spouse or a kid 25 or under. So if you're not married and you have kids under 25, and you die, is there nobody to sue? Kirk, good morning. <clears throat> Jennifer Scott. What's up, Justin? Jamie Howers. <clears throat> Yeah, I can just imagine someone who's just tired of taking care of this old person, just smothers, yeah. smothers him to death. That, that's murder. That's different. I'm talking about like in the hospital, like neglect and stuff like oh. that. Oh, oh, I was talking about people who were like oh. smothered in their home. That happens too. But they're just like, oh, he was old. Yeah. <clears throat> Yinzer, CC Hall. Leslie. CC Hall. Good morning. All right. So in Tampa, partial eclipse begins at one forty-three. Yokohama. Maximum eclipse is at three p.m. Okay, I'm gonna walk out. Two fifty nine and walk back in. Three four zero one. <laughs> Volkswagen Planet. Volkswagen. You will not see totality in Tampa Bay. Good morning, Michigan guy. What's up, Ginzer? I'm making the clips with my mushroom. You'll be able to see the sun. Are you reading that in chat, or are you just? No, I'm just out? saying that. Okay. Just on my own. Volkswagen <laughs> Planet. <laughs> Fruit time? Fruit time? Fruit I like your fit. It's cute as hell. Spencer, Spencer. 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 Ah, what's up, Mason? What's up, Mason? What's the mall? Look at Jen Epstein. She looks good in green. Photo Perez. She looks she great. Good. She's she's in, but there's other people that are all crooked and shit. No, it's just the dress. Bad dress. Bad dress. Bad dress. Bad dress. Yeah, dress I don't like that scene. Danny Mills dress. She borrowed it from Danny. I'm not wearing it backwards. Oh, that shit's funny. 
Thank you, Mike Hawk. Okay. Big Gator, one blue two. Such a horrible morning. Do we go late? No, I stepped in a pile of fucking dog shit. Uh oh. You were How'd that happen? In my house, it was dark. I was walking downstairs, all of a sudden, squish. Then I had to hop outside, hose my foot off. Oh, no. Man, you mu that make me so fucking mad at my dog. Oh, I was mad. But he's an old dog. And he, you know, he probably was. He ate late, and so. You don't know how to go potty. You should know to put it out, keep it off dad's path. Yeah. Path of fatality. Fun. Yeah, that's just, I got, I stepped in the path of fatality. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking pissed. And then I'm like, I'm cursing and shit, like the whole house wakes up. Did they? Yeah. I was motherfucking. God damn it. <laughs> but I saw one of the most exciting games ever this weekend, so. What's that? Huh? What game was that? My flag fucking football game. Oh. Oh, you didn't tell me where you guys were playing again. You just started <laughs> up again. Well, I'm glad that you told me this is, you've never mentioned me one time. Okay. Well, you, you must not want me to I coach did, you. I love you when you coach. You blew it off last season. Some of my friends spent a lot of time on the beach by the water. It was so Hello, everybody at YouTube, real fast, real fast. Golf walls, Verona. I got it, I got it, I got it. Alberto Perez. Andy, the Hogs Go 65 months, Bubba Nation 2023, 12 months. Andy Valentino, 70 months. Sarge 311, 59 months. PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, zero, zero, and zero today. La Max. We got some Cash App. The 20 from Eric. Oh, we did? Yes. That's it, though. I hope I got this. Can you open it later at some point? You got what, buddy? This, this package from Berto Perez. Let me just... Oh, you need to open it. Tell me about it. One day, Jay, later. It's the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Miss part of the show? We got you covered at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to Bubba Live Worldwide. Uh, today, about 2.50. Uh, it's looking like I might be, might be, I'm I'm, my plans are to be uh, live on uh, Rumble, YouTube, uh, Twitter, slash X, Twitch, Facebook. Now, at least a few of those we'll have on. And uh, I'll be live with Sumo at about 3.10 or something when the totality of Eclipse rolls through Columbus, Indiana. Here, here it is. Let me see. Let me. Um, I, I had the information here. No, I, I must have put it over here. The totality of 
of Columbus, Columbus, Indiana, I think it's like at 310. So I'm going to be live on all of our various platforms to give you a play-by-play report. I mean, the best, we're going to have the best Eclipse footage. It will be better than Fox and CBS, and they're not going to have somebody, some... some. They don't have boots on the ground like you have with Sumo. They don't got Sumo, buddy. No one's got Sumo. Exactly. Zachariah Morehouse, 50 on the cash app. In the way Sumo can... Well, goddamn, I'm here in the gra- I, uh, right side of the garage, and I can't see nothing in this... Let me see. It's been about three minutes now. All right. It seems like we're starting to get a little bit of light around here now. I wonder how much stuff got ripped off during the darkness <laughs> uh, here in Columbus, Indiana. Uh, let me, are they showing, are there various highlights from last night's WrestleMania uh, that are appearing online? Maybe you and Seth can can maybe send send them to me. I, I They probably had it pretty locked, the content yeah. locked pretty down. Peacock does, yeah. They usually strike people that uh, rip it off. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. The peacock, was, peacock is that one that just is. Uh, they're on it. It was. Yeah. Uh, it was. It was awesome, man. Last night. We're gonna get into a little bit of that. Uh, supposedly, you know, Rhett's, uh, uh, Seth is huge into it. Watched. I think both nights. Did you not? I I, I watched very intently Saturday night. Um, last night, I really just wanted to see uh, Cody versus Roman. But wasn't that the big? Yeah, the big deal, dude. And I'll tell you what, man. I'll, here's one thing: we're not going to get into it now. But Triple H, now that he's taken over, they had that WrestleMania done by like 10:45 last night. No more of this 12:15 a.m. stuff going deep into the night. Like they had that thing tight last night. Thank now, you. Is Triple H is, is Triple H the new Vince McMahon? I think he is. Is he not? Uh, yeah, he's like a creative guy, you know. But there's a couple other guys. But I I believe he's probably. The, the top voice in the company. Well, who else would there be? I think there's a guy like Bruce Pritchard and you know a couple of other guys. I don't know. Stephanie McMahon might come back, but you know Triple H. I know The Rock is on the board right now. So oh, The I Rock. Mean, th- there's a lot of people that that know what the customers want and the fans want that are in charge right now that are very in touch with it. Right, and so I did see, I did see. Uh, God, it was it not Bischoff, but Vince Russo. I saw Vince Russo over the weekend say that this is a money grab. They could have all this done in one day, but they try to string it out over two. Because, oh, uh, and he said and he said they they could theoretically have gotten it all in in one in about a four hour four and a half hour deal. They could have got it all in. I think they used to. I mean, the matches are pretty tight, but they have a lot of sponsors, a lot of commercials, and all that all that stuff they have to work in. But 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 nobody wants to sit down and watch WrestleMania. You know, starting at four that goes till but do, you know midnight. It's better pe- to have it split. But do people? I mean, okay, yeah. Uh, or do you make it tighter? You split. You don't split it. You keep it one event, and you just make it. Even more high spottier, meaning only the best of the best make it. You I, know, like like you know, like WrestleMania three and the Pontiac Silverdome. But still, Bubba, overall, I don't think I think between the two nights, maybe there was, I don't know, 13, 14 matches or something. I mean, they didn't pack thirty matches in there. Like they give everybody their time. They have a lot of talent right now to highlight. And I think two nights is perfect. And I think that starting to have the events on Saturday night, which they do now, uh, is even more is even more brilliant. You think Riddle's kicking himself in the ass because he was really on a big push. He was on a huge push. They had him with that Randy Orton high spot. Yep. Gabe I think he had a strap. Oh, he did. Yeah, they were tag team straps. I mean, he was refreshing. They were putting him over. He just again was it was super refreshing. He was, you know, he was a great energy. He was different. He, he was different. He was a good worker. He could put a guy over. He was a hell of an interviewer. His dry bro bro, high, not really Karen character, really I thought resonated with with the, I mean, it was a great gimmick. There, was, there, there were some gimmicks that are dumb. It was a great gimmick. Was he the only one that would wrestle barefoot? Yeah, yes. <laughs> and, 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 and kicking his flip flops yeah, off was a move. Was, was a move. <laughs> And the fans would go crazy for him. Am I right, Seth? Yeah, I mean Riddle. Riddle was great and tons of talent. I'm sure he's he's doing fine. I'm sure he's you know not worried about being in WWE. But I mean they they put up they put up with a lot with Matt Riddle, and I think they gave him a lot of chances before they were they decided to pull the plug on it. And then when Dana comes, and then when Dana, yeah, and then when Dana, like when when we had him on the air, he's like, you know, I got in trouble for doing rock star type stuff. I think that only goes so far, right? Pretty and then, much. Yeah. Unless you're a really rock star. Right, exactly. And uh, and, then, there, and yeah. then they got, but boy, he, I mean, he would have shined last, uh, you know, in, during during this past weekend, what do you not? Oh, yeah. 
I'm I mean, sure. He's yeah. just a hell of a worker. Yeah, yeah. I mean they yeah. they highlighted a lot of people this weekend. Yeah, he was he was outside a watch party. So. Yeah, he was had a day. Hold on, here's I I, yeah, I love Matt sucks. Riddle. I love Matt Riddle. I'm sure he's doing well. I hope he goes to Japan and kills it like he has been. He's been doing indie shows too, but last night while WWE was having their Super Bowl of the, I mean this is their Super Bowl. WrestleMania is their, would you not agree, Seth, this is their Super Bowl? By far. WrestleMania. While they're having their largest event of the year, which I think you participated in for, I think he participated in a couple of WrestleManias. He might have, yeah. Uh, Matt Riddle. Yeah, he did. While while they're having that uh, in Pittsburgh, uh, you're at a Dave and Buster's in Philadelphia having a watch party. Yeah. Mania was in Philly. I was in Philly. Yeah, yeah, it was, was at yeah, uh, Lincoln Financial Field where the Eagles play. That's what I'm saying. But he was Oh, so where was where was WrestleMania? Philly. And he was in Philly, too? He was in Philly. Yeah, right. he was at the Dave so, Buster's. Yeah, he, he probably made a nice chunk of change from the watch party. I know, but still. St- st- I mean, but but still, yes. You're right, Red. He probably did make 25, 30, 40 grand for a stupid-ass watch party at Dave and Buster's in the same city that the WrestleMania is in. But you got to, like, think, I mean... Last year, the dude was in the ring working, going over, and this year he's at a watch party at Dave and Buster's in the same city. <laughs> yeah, but thirty grand's thirty grand, I Bubba. Mean, you know I what mean, I mean? It's, I, I mean I, do you think do you think Gronk would be upset when he got thirty thousand for an appearance instead of being I mean, on the field? But I mean, well, Gronk. I mean, Matt Riddle's not anything comparative, and with regards to what he represents in pro wrestling, as to what Gronk represented in in NFL. I agree. I mean, you know. Like Matt Riddle would be that guy that was a second round pick that had, you know started for a couple of years, had some good stats, but uh, uh, broke the league policy, substance abuse policy too many times and got banned. Right? right like a Pac Man yeah. Jones. And so now that guy, you know, while the Super Bowl's going, while his team is in the Super Bowl, he's having a watch party at Dave and Buster's. Mm. You know, I mean. I understand. It's kind of like a Josh Gordon for the NFL. Josh Gordon. Yeah. What do you mean? Stud, like, he, for his first couple of years, he could, but he couldn't stay off the green, and he kept getting suspended. But he had so much talent that the NFL was kind of letting him, letting him come back every year, and teams would always sign him, and then finally they just got sick of him. Yeah, today, I got, uh, kind of like, kind, uh, didn't didn't Ricky Williams kind of go out that Same way, too? Same exact way, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Seth, yeah, didn't, Ricky, didn't Ricky Williams kind of go out that way? He had all the talent in the world. You know, Mike Dicka, Mike Dicka pretty much gave away the entire Saints fr- franchise to get this guy after he'd already flamed out of the league for being high all the time. And then he decides, I, I want to stop living on a mountain doing yoga and doing mushrooms all day, and I want to come back to the league, right? He had some so, great years at the end with the Dolphins. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if he played with anybody else after the Dolphins, but he the had, Ravens, some, I think, he had too? some really good I know, but he quality went, years. He didn't, yeah, he didn't do very good for Dick, the guy well, that gave I mean, away the farm. No one, I mean, Bubba, no one's ever going to live up to trading your whole draft for, especially not a running back. Hey, Alexa, no. what were Ricky Williams' NFL stats? Ricky Williams had 10,009 rushing yards and 66 rushing touchdowns in his NFL career, playing for the Baltimore Ravens, Miami Dolphins, and New Orleans Saints. Also, I, I can give you notifications on celebrity and entertainment <laughs> news. Thanks, Would you Ed. like me to do that? Yes. <laughs> Andy, my celebrity. you're now following pop culture, and you will receive notifications when they have updates. Hey, Alexa. I want to follow Bubba the Love Sponge as my pop culture hero. Hmm. I don't know that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Uh-huh. So, I, so listen, I didn't know that, I didn't know that he had over 10,000 yards. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, smoke a, smoke a little pot there, Ricky. Yeah. Who cares, right? Uh, so we were talking a little bit about, so anyway, Matt Riddle, uh, ho- uh, hopefully your watch party went, went well. It's almost kind of like, let me how I used to be the main guy at 98 Rock. Now I'm here. <laughs> and which would be the same as hosting a, you know, a, a, a watch party in Tampa. Yeah. Be like if Trent Dilfer uh, got traded from the Bucks, the Bucks made the playoffs, and he hosted a watch party. When the Bucks did make the playoffs in San Diego, I'm sorry, the Super Bowl in San Diego, one of the two. He was it would have been if Trent Dilfer would have had a watch party at the Dave and Buster's in San Diego while Brad Johnson was winning it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It would be like, man, come on, Vinny. So anyway, uh, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, and this is a story that I'd seen, and I didn't know if Dan had seen it or not, but it's saying that morticians, and again, old people are just, you know, like if there's no foul play, a guy just dies of a heart attack or a guy dies of a brain aneurysm or just of old age or just, you know, 
park, whatever, whatever a, an old person just naturally dies over. And it's not, you know, one day he was out playing golf and the next day he fell over dad like it was a gradual, you know. Kind of, and, and Dan, I hate to be morbid, but I'm kind of bringing up your father, you know, as an example. You know, Joe's death just didn't jump. Everybody, we, you know, the family all knew that he was that he was deteriorating. And, you know, the doctors were telling you the time period to expect. You know, it, it wasn't a just overnight thing. It was a three month gradual thing. But you knew it was coming. There was no foul play. There was nothing wrong with him per se, other than you know just oh, oh. Least watching. Yeah, you know, me walking in. As Stephen's got a pillow over his face. But other than that, it was completely normal. Yeah, yeah other than when Stephen had a pillow over his face because he wanted to get to the family money faster than everybody else did. You've suffered enough. Just because he wanted. Just because he knew he was going to inherit Daddy Joe's uh, waterside condo. He was already living on the water. No, no, because he already had plans to put Belly in there, oh. and then I'm taking Pops, right. Pops' place, put a little remodel on the deal, and I'll be the pimp. I mean, when Steve and Krista get done with that, that's going to be a pretty pimp. Oh, it's going to be very pimp. Like, that's going to be... So Steve was like Luca Brasi with the pillow. Yeah. Is it bigger so, than his house that he, that he had before? No, it's not bigger, but not it's, really. but it's, okay. it's going it's, to it's a lot more exclusive of an gotcha. area. Gotcha, okay. I mean, you're, you're ex- his his place now, Dan, is ultra exclusive. But the Joe, Daddy Joe's was just kind of old school, old money of Tampa exclusive. Yeah, it's that West Shore. It's those West Shore neighborhoods, you yeah. know, Beach Park, cool right, down, right, right down the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, you know these. The, so when a gradual or you know a non uh, emergency or n- uh, uh, not a, any type of scandalous who done it. You know, when that type of death happens, they just take the body to the morgue. Mm-hmm. That's where they take it. Mm-hmm. And th- then you have these people called embalmers mm-hmm. or morticians, and they prepare the body as such. If it's going to be an open casket, then they, they you know, run, I think they drain the blood and they run embalming fluid throughout the entire vein, veins of the dead person, which causes the body to be preserved and look a lot better if during an open casket ceremony. Now, well, all, pretty much all bodies now are embalmed unless they're being cremated. Yeah, exactly. So that means that even if it's a closed casket funeral, they replace the blood with like a formaldehyde type liquid. So it doesn't decay. So it doesn't decay quickly. Right. And you know, embalming was something that was really, you know, kind of I have to say invented by the ancient Egyptians. They were really good at preserving bodies and embalming almost always involved draining the blood and replacing it with some kind of other fluid that would be more of a preservative. And so when you do that, now let me ask you a question with with the blood industry being so big as it is, d- do they take that blood and sell it? No, it's, it's junk. Okay, because it's on an old person who died, so it's right. not good blood. Yeah, it's not good blood it, it, has, it, it doesn't have any more viscosity it's like it's take, got too much it. viscosity it's it's you know jelly right it's not slick and mm. good for your motor anymore no anyway no. so these 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 morticians and embalmers that prepare these well that basically you know they put like take, an iv in. they put take, a giant iv in take all the blood out of people's bodies and embalm them and this is how they do it bubba they put a catheter in once they put two catheters in, one's for the fluid they put in and the other one's to drain. And so they usually do it like in the neck on a big vessel like your jugular or something like that. And they put a catheter in there and they flush it. And then like the blood comes out the other side with the other catheter. And, and, and then when it comes clear, there's okay, we've you know, you you've now flushed the radiator, and now you got clear radiator fluid in there. Right. So um the problem is that these clots that these that this yeah, bomber is describing. Here's what they're finding now. So instead of blood they're now sometimes putting their initial catheter in and they're not getting anything to come out come out resistance. the, come out they the can't other push. side they can't push and it's, the body is it's something that's plugged the body's plugged, plugged. exactly and normally your blood no matter you know how fat or whatever it's still they can still get it they can they can get it out they can get it to flow out of your body and there's now instances of people these are people that are fully vaxxed their blood has coagulated into like almost like caulk, almost like you know glue or, well, they're or, or these, plastic. They're forming these white, real fibrous clots in their blood that don't look like they're platelet derived, but something else. And you know, I've seen this firsthand. 
couple of my vaccinated patients, their drains were putting out these really long, white, weird clots like this. And if you study them, it's weird because as soon as you take it out of fluid, they break apart. They don't follow normal behaviors of what a clot should do. And it's not a normal thrombotic thrombotic clot. It's something else. So it's some kind you, of fibrin. Do you feel that we've only just begun on the F around and find out um, thing, side effects of, of, of COVID because COVID was the COVID vaccines were never tested to the point where most places, and I think one time you told me usually eight-year trials mm-hmm. on all medication. Well, they have a blind placebo. Eight to nine years to get they to have, the FDA. Yeah, they really, really got to go. And we'd have- Not this no, time. We have no, <laughs> no, you know, no years worth of st- studies or data. They just shot us up with this COVID-19 Jesus juice. And now for the next <laughs> 10 years, I think that it, we're going to be finding- you know, different qualities and different side effects of, you know, the COVID-19 vaccination because nobody did any research on it. So now, naturally, the next seven to 10 years, doctors will probably be finding stuff that are probably a correlation on an untested vaccine that we made everybody get. I I sent you a video, Bubba, uh, of this. Just well, a new story. The, the the frustrating thing is, Baba, that that I agree the testing was done very rapidly and in an abbreviated fashion. But the the problem is that even so, even though they did that, normally when they test and they find alarms, flags, they stop. In this situation, you know, you're you're driving down the road and there's all these signs saying stop, 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 and you just keep barreling through, stop, ignoring it. Cliff ahead, and and then they just went straight then off the cliff. There's another sign that says Selma Louise. last chance to stop. Right, big ass cliff. Might want to think about hitting the brakes immediately, mm-hmm. and you keep going through the f- sixth warning signs. When you finally go off the side of the mountain, then whose fault is it? Yeah, it's, it's I, see exactly, and everyone you know the people who are the most guilty are all retiring. The people that are the most guilty are all going to be beyond any kind of statute of limitations for we'll criminal have, stuff. I, I think they're going to wait five years. Do you think? Do you ever think that we'll have? And I, I think I uh, on our Twitter this weekend. I mean, which by the way is at the Bubba Army. I think I asked this, and that is, do you think that we'll as as these COVID side effects rear their ugly heads? And we see things like this elastic, you know, blood and, and various things like that. Do you think that we'll have a congressional like where we will we bring up Fauci or we bring up, you know, the head of Pfizer or the head of Moderna on some congressional type hearings? Or do you think that the people that run the congressional type hearings, our government, are so bought and paid for by big pharma that there would, they would be afraid to ring anybody up on the deal because all big pharma's got it. Big pharma controls who's in office. Well, but the Him, part- them and George Soros. There'll be no commission. Well, the other thing was there, there's not going to be much because there's two problems. Not only does big pharma finance so much of the government, the government itself ran this. And it was run by the Department of Defense, which no one really realized until about two or three years into this, that the DOD is the one that ran the response. And so when the Department of Defense, when the U.S. military comes a knocking, you do whatever they say and you bend over and say, yes, thank you. And so <laughs> that's that's exactly what, what happened. They strong-armed the world and the world had to just capitulate. I didn't because I told them to go F themselves, but, 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 hey, but I on. had the luxury to. No, hold on. You did tell them to go F themselves. But let's not you know, be all cocky and everything. They I, they they had you a few times concerned. Mm-hmm. They're so they're so powerful, mm-hmm. and they are so bought and paid for mm-hmm. that you had to retain an attorney, and were concerned about some of the correspondence you were getting from the state of Florida and the WHO and the CDC. They, and the insurance companies. And they were... And the board. They, You were on their radar. Oh, yeah. But to fortunately... Put, to potentially, I mean, you know, take, you know, penalize you. Take your boards from right. you. Fortunately, our Surgeon General stepped up and Florida became a friendly state to people that were treating people off of the uh, you know established protocols. Whereas a lot of other states, and I'm talking about probably 30 other states, if you had lived there and behaved like I behaved... I'd have, I'd have lost my license. Can I ask you 100%. a question, Dan? Dan? Dan, hold on. That's been a lot of your life, 
even before you were a doctor. <laughs> if I behaved the way I behaved, I would have been arrested in most states. Yes, exactly. Right. Like that. That. I mean, I, I mean, I think you behaved probably not so cool when you lived in North Carolina. I got to think that when you lived in Louisiana, you were running hard. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you you were. I mean, how hard did you run at Duke? Um, I ran very hard at Duke. Yes. Where did you run the hardest? Hold Florida. on. Florida. No, hold on. You're not answering Gainesville. question. Out of the, out of where you went to undergrad, medical school, visited your brothers, <laughs> live now, uh, live, you know, live. So that would be grew up and live in Tampa, went to school at Duke, North Carolina, medical school at Gainesville, and then visited your brothers a lot in Tallahassee, of, and then had residency in New Orleans. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. Then started practice in Tampa. Well, I did three years of residency in Tampa too, though. Okay, and three. Okay, that's just that's just your yeah. Tampa body of work. Right. So between Tampa, New no Orleans, and Gainesville, what you want that you, where you misbehave the most? Yes, really. New Orleans and Gainesville. Yes, and uh, in New Orleans you can do whatever you want as long as you don't kill a baby and drag him across the street. They pretty much let you go. <laughs> <laughs> so do and then Gainesville, your big sling indeed. You know. Medical school, you know. Yeah, med school was fun because I was, you know, I had a friend that had a limo. I was, you know, a, a medical student in a college town. Um, it was a lot of so fun. So when these other good-looking juniors would roll up to a girl and be like, yeah, I'm a junior. Or you'd be like, uh, I'm uh, in med school. Yeah, it blew everyone else's rap out. Right, it did, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a good rap. It was a good rap. <laughs> but, uh, but I was really hard in Louisiana, though. I mean, that's that's where I, I, I went real hard there. So. Hard to paint. Cajun hottie. Hard, hard to paint, yeah. Just because of the, the Cajun hottie factor? The Cajun just, hottie. Just because also in New Orleans, I mean, it was And just, you now are official, now and now officially, you kind of are a doctor. Right. And the only one, the only thing, the only rap better than being a doctor in New Orleans was being a, a New Orleans saint. Other right. than that, there was no... Or now so, so, Pelicans, so, so, they weren't around then. No, the Pelicans weren't around, and there's no one saying so, like 50 they, guys, and half of them were fat, so it wasn't tough to, what to you compete to against say. them. Uh, let me, when I come back, you, gave, you, got me, you got me report on these COVID clots. Yes. We'll get, we'll get into that. Uh, we'll also get a WrestleMania a little bit uh, as well. So, if you want 24-7 on-demand Bubba and the crew, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. Good morning, Lisa Sacco, Spencer Spencer. like a cruise last time there was a, an eclipse and like Bonnie Tyler was singing Total Eclipse of the Heart as it was happening. Oh, that's Man, I bet she had a payday on that one. <laughs> I mean, she probably made at least 2500 on oh, that. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I hope so. It's a hell of a song. I wonder what kind of, I mean, that's the kind where like magic or, you know, like that song will always be played in some Triple A or C. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's, so I wonder what kind of mailbox money you get on that deal. Uh, I mean, if she's got the publishing, I mean, probably a shitload. Yeah, I mean, uh, fucking Richard Mark said he used to make $8 million a year from all his hits. Yeah, I know Bonnie Tyler had a couple. Yeah. 
Jedna za ne znamo za malo. Twenty-one-year-old model and Harvard graduate. So, like, what are those in your heart? Do you? That's my heart. Your lungs? Yeah. Is that what it is? Your lungs do work for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to go on the air. I hope he leaves. Six. That's a big deal, huh, Bobby? There, if you die, the, the show comes to a screeching halt. No, it doesn't hurt as much anymore. What do you have? Huh? I brought him. What do I have? Chocolate. I got a rotten banana, and I got some chocolate It's, it's in the fridge. And some bread crackers. It's not rotten. It's frozen, so it's here. Put it in the fridge. Yeah. 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 I mean, do we have both this week? Yes, we do. <laughs> sure, you can figure it out. They're <laughs> open, always. Are you kidding me? What the fuck is wrong with you? I should have been like, you twisted. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta line up the two lines. Uh, it's like Tylenol. <laughs> you gotta press it. Is that how you do it? Just like that? Yeah. Bye, bye. Right. <laughs> Trying to tell you. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Chocolate Amish? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, it's like frosting kind yeah, of. Yeah, that's like frosting. Mm -hmm. It really does. Mommy, you gotta try this. <laughs> Come on, dude. Come on. Tell me, tell me it's not good. Here, it's like on. Dunkaroos, but for adults. Come on. Hey, Baba. I ain't trying shit. There you are. <laughs> Chocolate Hummus. I don't like hummus to begin with. You know, I don't like, like hummus either. It's for fucking. It's for, it's for people that I know what you're about to say. Yeah, I know. You, you almost got in trouble, so no, thank you. But you, dude, this chocolate hummus is like icing on a cake. No. Nope. It's good. It's good. Huh? Yeah. Seth, are you trying chocolate hummus? He was the one that introduced me to it, and he's not in the room. God damn it, Seth. Like seven years ago, he introduced me to it. What? Yeah. When I was at Cox, he had a bunch, and I was like, I've never had that before. He gave me one, I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck that. That's it. good. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly good. Chocolate hummus. They use for the two girls in the cup. Dude. <laughs> that was like 9 11 for me. I'll never forget yeah. where I was, who I was with. <laughs> what well, happened <laughs> when it all went horribly wrong? The music. <laughs> I can never hear the song in my head. People would use it as their ringtone. Back when ringtones were a thing, and you'd be like, what the fuck? Are we 73? Hey Seth, man, this chocolate hummus is the real deal. Oh yeah, you having it for the first time? Yeah. Want um, some? some? No, I'm all friend? good. I'm all good. Come on. No, 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 I'm good. <laughs> what are you eating it with? Tell Bubba, it's good. It's grand crackers. crackers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's, that's perfect. I'm not, everybody should find out some deal. <laughs> All the times Hulk Hogan or Tucker Carlson called in. We have it all for you on BubbaArmyHQ.com. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Again, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com. BetterHelp.com. When you need to try to make some more time for what makes you happy and you just sit here and make excuses on how you can't do it, how you can't get to it, you need to figure out how you can wiggle that into your schedule to make you happy. The best way to squeeze the special thing into your schedule to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find a way that you can do more of that. 
If you're thinking about uh, starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedules. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists at any time. No additional charge. It's quite simple. Learn to make more time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Go to BetterHelp.com. Forward slash BTLS. That'll get you 10% off your very first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R. BetterHelp. H-E-L-P.com. Forward slash BTLS. I uh, I asked Seth, because we'll probably get a little bit into WrestleMania uh, today. He watched. I, did, I didn't watch one minute of it. But uh, I asked him if Brock Lesnar was part of it. And he's like, no, they still got him in timeout for pooping on a girl or something like that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, I think- they- so- Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Seth. No, I was going to say, I just, uh, he, Vince McMahon allegedly sent him like uh, pictures and, you know, he said that he wanted to do that to, uh, to that woman that was getting passed around. So they haven't really acknowledged him. They vetted him out a lot of their intros and stuff. And then uh, Paul Heyman got inducted into the Hall of Fame this weekend, and they didn't have, in the video package, they didn't have anything from Brock Lesnar in there. They said he's coming back, and Triple H, Triple H said he's not gone from the WWE. Yeah, Triple H was asked about it at one of the pressers, and he said that he's just at home being Brock. He's very much still in their plans. Uh, Heyman brought it up during his speech. There wasn't anything in the video package, but Michael Cole had also mentioned Lesnar on commentary uh, during the main event, going down the list of guys who have been trying to beat Roman Reigns for the title over the last four years. I think we got a... Lesnar short, don't we? Yes, we, we got a few. I think yeah. two or three of them. Yeah, let me send me if you can send me the uh, the Les the, the Lesnar short where he talks about. I think I say, hey man, you're ma- there's a few years you're making like three or five million a year, private jets, the whole nine yards. And he goes and says, I felt like we were in a circus, and after the match, they loaded me in a train car and took me to the next city. I just am not why you know, like I I I just can't. And that's 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 the way these traveling wrestlers they're all independent contractors. I said it to you. And they're not employees of the WWE. They're well, I mean like Triple H and things like that, but the most 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 of the workers are just uh what they call are what they call general contractors and they that's... have they have to make, you know, they they, they I think I think they get a per diem and they get rental car they 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 they, get, they rent cars and they the hotel, like all of that's like <clears throat> as a private contractor. What were you going to say? Somebody started to say something. I think it was no, you. No, nothing. Brett. Never mind. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, here's here's our short uh, that we have on our YouTube channel. I think you could certainly find it. Go to the shorts division and just type in Brock. Yep. And you and you'll find it. But I had I had Brock on. I used to ask the really tough questions. You had a three year run with Vince, but I mean you were making like five million a year with a private plane to and from the venues Jesus. and like a lot of people scratch I mean, their think about the kind of, I, they they probably you, you, Seth that with with Roman Reigns and they're big, big, big guys now, they probably have those type of I mean Brock verified that that's the kind of deal he had. I'm assuming like with well, Cena and Rock, they probably got all those deals, don't Brock's they? Brock's making twelve million a year now. Yeah, private jets. I think he gets. I think Brock shows up and leaves the same day of a match. Yeah, like Hogan used to when I was hanging with him. Here with the private plane to and from the venues, and like a lot of people scratch their head as to how you walked away from all that. Well, I, I didn't want to be a, a, a guinea pig anymore, you know. Right. I just wasn't made for the business. To me, it was like I was traveling with the circus. When the show was over, they'd lead me uh, into on the train cart, and we'd, we'd ride the train to the next town, get off, perform, and get back on the train cart. Do you remember a particular moment where you just were like, okay, this is it. I've had it. I'm fed up. I'm done. Oh, I mean, it wasn't just any one time. There was about a three-month period where I knew it was coming. And then after WrestleMania, I almost broke my neck jumping off the rope. Well, I hadn't performed this move for a year, and Johnny Laurinaitis thought it'd be one hell of an idea, and then JR... Palm, Palm Harbor's very own Johnny Laurinaitis. <laughs> but, yeah. Married to one of the Bella... Twi- mar- married to the Bella Twins' mom. Did you guys know that? Oh, no. Really? no. Seth, did you know that? Uh, still, after what he's been accused of with I, Vince McMahon? I think, <laughs> I think so. Wow. I think so. We got a WrestleMania moment, so, you know, get her hell, kid. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, there was a lot of different moments, and I just realized, you know, the money and the fame wasn't all that important to me. You had a three-year run run with Vince, but, I mean, you were making... But, but, I I mean, that was, was like, three retirements ago, wasn't it? Yeah, I sent you another short on Brock on Triple H. Now, is this this, uh, this on us? Yeah, it's just a quick one. So people can go to our YouTube channel and find this? Yes. Type type in just what? what, I just typed in... uh, 
Brock. Yeah, just type in Brock. Just go to our shorts page. Go to our yep. shorts page and search away there, boy, buddy. Any conflict with Hunter? No, I didn't. You know what? I, I tried to get along with everybody. I didn't have any... Seth, I used to ask good questions, didn't I? Oh, you sure did. I mean, he's for real. He speaks really well, too. He doesn't speak like the animal he looks in the ring. I mean, he speaks... on my shoulder or anything, you know. Hell, if it wasn't Triple H uh, screwing Stephanie, I'm sure there would have been somebody else in line, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't get... That ne- Seth, that never got near the traction we should have. <laughs> that should have that got way more organic traction. Yeah. Brock Brock Lesnar says, you know, if Triple H wasn't blasting Stephanie, one of the boys would have been. Oh yeah, right. I mean, that, I don't that, think that, he's the only guy to say that though. Could have been somebody else in line. You know? <laughs> 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 I mean, that's just the way it is. You that's know? the quote of the day. You know, that's so. the quote of the day from Brock Lesnar. If it ain't Triple H, it's gonna be one of the other boys. It might as well be him. Absolutely. <laughs> She's like the best. Any button. conflict oh, with Hunter? I, my, no, on. I didn't. You know what? I, I tried to get along so, with everybody. I didn't have any. Well, I mean, he was insinuating that he was going to be him. Yeah, you never know. And I'm going to, I'm going to blast. She said, it might as well." You know, at the end of it, I think as he said, "It might as well be me." From Macho to Triple H, maybe, could have been Brock Lesnar. Maybe we can billion dollar vagina. We can, we can. We, that is, that is a billion dollar vagina. It's a billion dollar vagina. Whew, think about that. Yes, I am. <laughs> think about that, man. Billion being, dollars being with a, shooting out of it. I don't know, Dan, if you could be with a woman that was worth more than you. Oh, God, absolutely. No, I why do. not? And be, and, and be like she's, the jet. and she's the booker. I don't care. Like she's like Dan. You don't care. Yeah, whatever, mm. Dan. Dude, I'd love you to be a kept to man. Do? I'd love to be a kept man. But, no, you, but you me, I'm so tired of working. Please, no, I know, I, let me sit home and wait for the UPS guy. I know, but what I'm saying, Dan, is like she, <laughs> she, she. That sounds way too real. She, <laughs> I feel as if you're projecting as to what you're. Wife's you know, responsibilities in life are. Oh, come on, man. It's got to be hard to, like, you know, sit there and wait for the, you know. Amazon package guy. Amazon come. package guy to go and just, you know, have, have the yeah, long but, guys but if there. Yeah, but if you were a kept woman, guys there if you're a kept cool woman she, you know, she would tell you, you can't go out tonight. You can't do this. You can't. Now, granted. Yeah, we're, we're, drinking, we're having caviar and champagne tonight. You can't go out with the boys. Okay, I'll, I'll rough it. Yeah. So you're saying eventually you'll, you'll go. Go. You, do you even yeah. like those things? <laughs> yeah, I like how you are. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ew, let me. Did you see my tweet about that? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's disgusting. Uh, what? There's this how, they, how they get the caviar? How they get the, the caviar? Yeah, they're this real oh, big it's like fish. Fish row, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> let me. Maybe you get. I want to see that. But I, don't. I got. I got it on my. I got it on our Twitter at the Bubba Army, and I. I. I, I, I tweeted it. So let, let me. will get it to me here uh, momentarily. And uh, it is disgusting. I, I even put like, there's no no reason, no wonder I won't even. I've never even tried it. I've never tried caviar, and I have no desire to. It's like a you ever have sushi? Yeah. You ever have sushi with the little like orange stuff on the outside? Yeah, that's yeah. fish roe. That's caviar. Oh, it is. Yep. Yeah. Same thing. Oh, Sheep. then I kind of like it. it's yeah, kinda, that's it's what I'm saying. It's good. It's got, it's kind of like a little salty, dill well, tiny. It depends on the fish and no, stuff. No, that, too. but it seems like it has a little snap to yep, it. Yep, sure does. I didn't know. You, you like, like a boba ball? Baba. Yeah, it's I like, like a micro bubble. pudding. <laughs> It's like it's like the it, it's like the little it's like the little fishy things they got in tapioca pudding. Oh, the boba. Exactly. The it's like little tapiocas. Yeah. How did uh, how did this get associated with rich people? Caviar. It's expensive, expensive as balls. There's oh my god. Really An ounce is like a hundred bucks. Oh, is it? Right, like a nice on. balsamic vinegar. Hold on. Ew, this, ew, by ew. the way, by the way, this ew. is this is on our our uh, Twitter channel. Because let me, I'm finding a bunch of good yeah. stuff. Oh Jesus. Here we go. This is. No, this down in Asia. Here we go. Okay, this is this, right. this is how they this is how they you know farm or harvest. Ca- or harvest caviar. This is mm-hmm. how they do it. All of that. Yep. All of that is. It's eggs? from a sturgeon. Yeah, it's a pregnant. Holy it's a pregnant, Jesus! It's a pregnant sturgeon. Oh, that's a lot. It's so probably harvest. like thousands and thousands of dollars worth of oh, caviar. Probably more than that. I mean, that looks like it's that looks like, like pew. I mean, but this looks like it might be it's all egg. 20, 30 pounds. That's, which is like a massive amount. Of, yeah. Of, like of, what would 20 or 30 pounds? Dude, of, retail is like, like I said, for like an ounce, it's a hundred bucks yeah. in a restaurant. Right. And you probably only get it from certain fish, right? Yeah, sturgeons usually. Oh, okay. Should we take yeah, out the like, kayak and find a pregnant sturgeon today? <laughs> sure, let's go. <laughs> Dude, I mean, if, if we got 10 cages sitting right there Hello, on the table, uh, let's co- go. Hello, Cushion household. Hey, Phoebes, I need to talk to, uh, to Seth real fast. Uh, can I get a hold of him? 
Uh, is he is he doing cards? Oh no, he quit cards. He's got a kayak uh, <laughs> that he goes he's down to, and he's looking for a sturgeon. <laughs> <laughs> he says he only needs one for our family to be for little for little Phoebe to have her college paid for the one, rest. Of, just one pregnant he just sturgeon. Has to get one pregnant sturgeon, and we're set. <laughs> I had no idea the volume of caviar they get out of one fish. All right, well, so I mean, I mean, I mean Dan, it's so okay. expensive. I mean, oh. shit. Oh, Shoot. Dan, Dan, what no. is your problem? Oh, no. <laughs> what, what is your I stopped myself. Did I? <laughs> no. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I mean, you're yeah, so yeah, sick. Did they contact? You stopped, you stopped yourself after the hard tea. <laughs> yeah, bitch. Yeah. After the hard tea, you stopped. No check, yeah. in, the, no check in the swing there. You dumbass. Jesus. Okay. My lord, so, buddy. You're running a little bit loose. It's not the weekend. Well, he's fired up about how much we're, money he's wasted on, on caviar. I know. And how much he likes chocolate now, hummus. Now, look, look, look. <laughs> there it is. Now, I got to say that that is probably, I mean. Pounds. Oh. Pounds. P- hundreds of pounds. What's that yellow stuff? I don't know. It's part of their bladder. <clears throat> do they, Lummy, do you think they cut in a little bit of the bladder? Like oh, fit yeah, because like they have some in there. Yeah. Oh. L- 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 did, you deal with, did you do with caviar when you were deal- doing uh, food, uh, f- seafood? A little bit, but it's it's expensive to keep and hold. But you weren't the guy that was doing that. You were the guy that was just you know getting it from the wholesaler and, and trying to sell it to a retailer. You weren't out there like a caviar the, middleman. You, were, you no. weren't out there in the deep seas with your with your fishing go- goggles on, go- go- you know, galoshes Scooping on. Caviar? No. Yeah, no, you weren't bringing in. Now, where are now? St- where are sturgeons? Are these? Saltwater, because the sturgeons, I always thought, I thought were, like in, were like yeah, in Wisconsin yeah. and, and, and like Lake Superior and up by Green Bay. They go sturgeon fishing. Where are they, Bubba? Are they, they mommy? And, yeah, they, I mean, yeah, they're up north. They're fresh. They're most of those are the ones you get the caviar that are farm raised. So the they wild. farm raise a fish, then they sacrifice it to get the caviar? Yeah, that's the whole point. That's why they have the farms. It says so Atlantic wait, sturgeon are. It. Anadromous fish. They are born in freshwater and then migrate to the sea and back again to freshwater to spawn. Right. So, where do they produce the caviar? Do you get them in the freshwater? Spawning in Wisconsin? Wisconsin? Spawning in Correct. freshwater. Yeah. Yeah, that's why they do it in the farm because uh, they they watch them and see when they uh, have the un. So what do they do, Lummy? In the farm is they have them on seawater and then once they need the freshwater, they put them over the freshwater tank and then once they need to go back to the seawater, they just put them back to the seawater tank. So they have it all like a whole controlled environment where they can take them, you know, right and move the. And fish. these are Atlantic sturgeon. I'm sure there's different species. Yeah, so. There's a lot of different species. Yeah. I know guys. Guys that used to, I, I know guys that used to have like shanties in Wisconsin, and they were always, you know, they were always fishing for sturgeon. But I don't know. I never heard them talk about the fact they were fishing for. They were just fishing. Who? Oh yeah, I got the biggest sturgeon this year. <laughs> like I never knew uh, that there was any caviar ramifications at all within the Wisconsin. And let me, they would have to. It was in the dead of the winter, and they'd have to. You could only get sturgeon ice fishing. And so you'd set up these little shanties because it was because the, the weather was so bad. You'd set up these little shanties, and then these little shant like like were little you know tents, and you could have like a little fire in there and stuff like that. Like it was really yeah, you th- it, it, it's it's really really cold and 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 really brutal conditions, and you'd have to. That's the only way you could get a sturgeon is through ice fishing. Now I don't know if those sturgeons are the ones that are you know they got the caviar. They, they they do have caviar, but the chances of finding one that uh, has the caviar that you need or even has caviar uh, is, is pretty rare. Don't talk us out of it, Lummy, okay? I'm still getting involved in this. Well, we uh, can still catch caviar. No, 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 no. Are, yeah. are there sturgeons? Hey, there you go, Seth. We could turn that stupid algae-infested uh, pond in the back. Sturgeon farm. And all, we yeah. have to, hey, all we have to do is grow like three or four of them. I'll impregnate Next, a sturgeon if I have to. There you go. More money than perch. Yeah, and bluegills. I mean, love bass. Me. I think sturgeons need really deep, cold. Yes. Like I don't think I don't think we could put a I don't think we could get a sturgeon and put back in our pond and it would live very long. No, it probably would not live. Long it at probably all. really. It's yeah. yeah. I think it's a cold. It's a cold weather fish. It has to be really, really, really cold. Can we just chuck ice cubes in it all day? <laughs> no. Look at- <laughs> That a, we got to buy a cooling system for the pond in order to be able to raise our one sturgeon because we feel as if we got one sturgeon. It's and, a $10,000 fish. Yeah. We, we, you know, if we got you know one or two of those a week, we wouldn't have to do this radio thing anymore. We could just be you know, sturgeon farmers. Idiot. God, I did life all wrong.
I know. We should have, you know, what we should have done, Seth, when we were growing up, we should have said, oh, you know, all of our f- friends in high school and stuff were going on to be doctors and lawyers and, you know, f- tradesmen and electricians and, you know, various things like that to make a lot of money. We should have said, hey, you know what? We're going to go to the Atlanta, over to like uh, New Hampshire or Nantucket and get, buy one boat and be sturgeon fishermen. One boat, two nets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when I come back, I got to get to the coagulation, blood, uh, the vi- you know, at the end of the day, if you got the COVID-19, I, listen, I'm, I don't know this to be true. This is just strictly my opinion. But if you got the COVID-19 vaccine that potentially you may have put your body at risk to maybe end up killing you faster than it might have been, I'm just telling you, you could be turning your blood into rubber right now. That's what they're finding. <laughs> Great. Turn it yeah. that people that are fully vaccinated turn their blood to rubber. And you know what? You you might die. We don't know. Well, I mean, there's you there's, might die there's, of that. But it, it can't possibly be the vaccines that cause the massive uh, increase in all cause mortality. Just happened to start the same time that the vaccine started. I'll tell you what, you know, Dan, that's even more of a reason for me to do what I do every 120 days where I give my double red blood cells, you know, how I mm-hmm. donate my blood. Well, I mean, if I did get vaccinated, but I'm taking out my blood every 120 days. Can I get rid of that bad blood? I, I'm diluting, you know, the bad stuff, and mm-hmm. right? And my body's producing new stuff. Ideally, the further away you are from the vaccine, the safer you would be. Right. How many of us did not get vaxxed? Lummy, did you? No. Dan? Nope. Anna? No. Rhett? No. Seth? Mach? Nope. Seth, I did, so I did with you. Yeah, no, I did. I did. You got one shot or two, three? I got two. Moderna Willies. I got a Moderna with a Moderna chaser. How about you, Seth? I got two. Moderna? Uh, Yeah. With the two boosters? No, I didn't do a booster. Oh, you just did... I just did the two shots. Then when I they kept saying you had to go back and get more, I just thought it was stupid. So yeah, like wait. <laughs> that's what you know, Seth. That's what all of America. America. It just took a while for us to figure it all out. But yeah. eventually they're like, you know, come on now. But I'm on shot four. I also don't think I would have been able to work with the lightning though if I wasn't vaccinated. I know that's the problem, man. They right. actually were taking people's rights away. Like they were using it there. And you know how we talk about the weaponization of the government. That truly was the weapon. Wep- Whatever weaponization of society. Mm-hmm. Remember, you couldn't travel. Right. Some some places there were some you know jobs and some employers that actually had if you don't get vaccinated, you're fired. All federal employees, all medical employees. That's can't, what they tried to do. If you had use, a federal contract, if you had like, if you were working like at Lockheed Martin and they had federal contracts, they were forcing all the people at Lockheed to get vaccinated. What, what they were, did everything they could. To to make sure you got a needle in your arm. What were the ramifications if you were caught with fake papers? Oh, they they threatened federal crimes for that. For fake, and I know so many people. You're right by the January. I looked into it. Not gonna lie. You're right by the January sixth guy in in court. That's they threatened, but they didn't do anything. I don't know anyone (laughs) that got in trouble for that. Hey, what are you in here for? Fake vaccination papers. (laughs) (laughs) Trying to go to concert. What what are you in for? I stormed the uh, January sixth building. I didn't do anything, but I was inside taking a few pictures. But I wasn't doing anything. I didn't take the, the, the. the lecture out. I didn't. I didn't do anything. As a matter of fact, the Capitol Police let me in. They let me in. I went around, took a couple selfies. I didn't cause no problems. I didn't see anybody. Didn't break any windows. And I walked right back out the door. I walked in the front door and I walked right back out. Those people are doing are doing like three years in prison. Five. Some those, of them. Geez. Those those people. There's this one woman who was. Pr- I, I think I retweeted it earlier uh, this weekend. Let me see if you can find the story. There was this one woman that said she was praying inside of the Capitol building on January 6th. And there's videotape of her praying inside the Capitol building on January 6th. That's all she did is she, I guess, kneeled down and prayed. That's it. That's all she did. And they're they're trying to put her up. uh, She's actually on trial right now facing like five years in prison because she went into the Capitol building. Got down on her knees, prayed, and turned around and left. Didn't break a window, didn't hit anybody, was allowed in, walked out, and she is and she's a grandma too. She's like, you know, sixty years old. She's like, I I was just praying uh, for the election. I felt as if it was stolen for him from me. And I was just praying. Now I'm facing five years in prison. 
Why is Bill Clinton's mom <laughs> sneaking in? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to deep dive into the Bubba the Love Sponge show from the past, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge show. We'll be back after these words. I mean, send that to me. If, if I'm trying to find it, I, I found a news article. But I'm trying to find the tweet. Okay. If any consolation, send me the news. But wait till the last minute. Okay. Perfect. You guys have her. I sent you a Twitter. Is that, is that the one, Bubba? Let me see, buddy. Is that your spinning wheel? I mean, have you put that together yet? Almost. It, it just takes a little bit of time. All right, put it together. Moving parts. So put it together correctly, please. I am. It's one moving part. I meant the, the screw. Yeah, DDP. I thought, I thought it was the best. Oh, uh, screw move. Screw's move. Best main event of all time. Screw's on move. Nothing wrong with that. That's what it's here for. It's not it's nice pull cush Tim. I'll put it in chat. Nice. Oh. Thanks, Tim. What up, Grouper Lips? Elway rookie. Oh, man. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad it kind of threw us off. I'm a, I like uh, Undertaker. I like Austin more, but the Undertaker spot was cool. Joe Gondak, fifty dollars on the cash app. What up, Jason? Absolutely, BMD. Joe. What up, Don't Panic? It's organic, Gene. Good morning. <clears throat> what up, Nug? Permagrom, Storage Shed, thank you, Pippi. Berto, I got it right here, man. Whenever Bubba says it's okay, I'll open this up. Thank you. What up, Spencer Squared? Cena's seen as a handsome man. So long you want me to listen to you? <laughs> no, I'm glad I'm glad Wiz because I, I think he's gonna get involved in the in the big in the heavyweight title picture now. No, no there's Gunther's a, a main eventer. <laughs> Tell me to come up with nothing burger. No, Tim, I didn't I was in I was in Pittsburgh. I got oh I got this Berto. I know what I just was asking is you breathe all the way in, it's like the sharp pain just goes right to it. I'm not on camera, I'm holding up a package. Huh? You just need a cracker. Really? Like a fake CPR and then let me lie around, let me do CPR. There are cracks. The best part was uh the best part was Drew McIntyre tweeting during his match. Heard you did a big high spot through the window over the weekend. What the fuck? Hold on, hold the fucking phone. Let me. 
What's going on at Lummies? What's going on at Lummies on Saturday? I so bad. Yeah. Yeah. right? I know. Sammy's uh. Did you pop his back from the front? I popped his front from the front. Sammy's got the Daniel Bryan thing. God, uh, Samantha Irvin is just amazing. Jay Gator, I did not, man. I did not. But I haven't been on IG. That's probably why I need to be cracked. I mean, is everything is everything good? Did you cut yourself up? No. I think the screen stopped. I'm gonna check. Uh, I'm gonna catch up on everything later today. You fell off the ladder. You're the man, Berto. Oh shit! You spoiled it. Even though I kind of knew it was in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, half my body was outside. Oh. Yeah, Gluther, uh, they should build up Imperium, throw another the guy in there. You think you cut? No. The one guy's dating yeah. Tiffany Stratton. Who are you? Who are you? The guy the Grand Incas and you're bottom window. Is that the Tampa house? Or? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Let's do it, Danny. Give me the info. Oh, wait, Spartan sounds serious. <laughs> You're listening to the man that is best friends with Deion Sanders, Tony Stort, and not Hulk Hogan anymore. Now, back to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. It is just, this is situation is just a, uh, reared, reared its head within the last uh, 30 seconds or so. But I think um, today might be my last day on radio. Oh. Uh, I think we're going to, um, I'm going to take a long, hard look at moving forward. Uh, due to this uh, tweet that I just read from H. Pearl Davis, he said, "Here's the new way. Here's the new way for you know to be very rich and very famous." And I, th- I think I'm doing it all wrong right now. He says, "There's only n- uh, eight things you must do," and I, c- I could literally do all eight of these. Like, if there's eight, Dan. If there was eight things that you could easily do to make eighteen million dollars. Mm-hmm. Would would you not do it? I'd consider it. All right, here you go. Number one, sell your butthole on OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Two, make $9 million for selling said butthole. Huh. Three, find God and post a video about it. Hmm. Four, raise prices on your OnlyFans. Five, spend money doing, po- I'm sorry, spend months doing podcast tours talking about your OnlyFan money. Six, <laughs> finally. <laughs> I mean, it's true, right? Absolutely. How many times did you see, hey, welcome to uh, Over the Top Yippee-O broadca- a podcast. It's got 900 million f- followers, but uh, we got Trixie here. Trixie, what do you, I make 22000 a month doing OnlyFans. And I don't get naked at all. That's right. I just, I got to use pay pigs. And I, I'm just, oh my God, one month I did 105000 I got, I mean, this is so far, this is true. Okay, so five, spend months on doing podcasts talking about how much you make on OnlyFans. Six, decide to delete, I'm sorry, finally, number six, finally delete OnlyFans and start a conservative <laughs> commentator career. Like, be conservative, be like, you know, Alex, you know, be like, like Glenn Beck. And then seven, become a preacher. And then eight, make nine more million dollars on OnlyFans. <clears throat> so I think I think I could do that. In that you order. Cut out six of those and just make your eighteen million on OnlyFans. Well, I think because it was a waste of time. No, I mean I think I think you have to go through that progression in order to get the vol the, that volume. Like nah, for you instance, got a pretty butthole. Okay, so you make <laughs> you make. You make nine million then, right? On your stellar, like dramatic model butt. So, but that butthole's only going to make you nine. But it's a model butthole. I'm Dan. I'm not I arguing mean, with like you. You're best. not going to be able to milk much more than nine out of the marketplace on said butthole. So you, you, ha- you have to go do. You have to go do the other things. You got to find God, and then you have to. Um, Raise your prices on OnlyFans because now you're formerly a butthole person, but now you're a God person. 
And those religious zealous, they'll pay. You know, be like, listen, I was going to pay ninety nine. You know, I was paying nine, I was paying nine ninety nine to see your butthole, but now you're a preacher telling me how bad that is. Eleven ninety nine certainly seems very fair. Very fair. Then you spend months doing podcasts, other podcast shows, telling them your story. And, and, uh, I used to be at OnlyFans, and then God made me just stop selling my right. butthole. And and the, and people love numbers, so mm-hmm. you brag about how much money you're making on OnlyFans. Right. So I made nine million on OnlyFans. I made nine thousand in selling God. No, Dan, have you be like? Are you are you being like argumentative with me no, here? No, I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm, I'm just, giving you. I'm. We're, we're talking the about a top, I, topic. I, I, I understand. Just shut that. up. Not, I don't know that a guy that has money can sit here and even go through this process. It's me and Seth and Lummy that are contemplating this sort of things. I just not don't understand. I just don't understand just how up. the OnlyFans dries up and then rekindles. Do you think that it might be a little bit of satire, Dan? Mm-hmm. Okay. Jesus. I just feel like last Thursday. Uh, by the way, Seth and Lummy, you two will never, ever, 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 ever think about both being gone at the same time. <laughs> what the hell? When, 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 I, when I have Brian and Numbnuts over there Hi. doing nothing but just throwing me curveball, much like what Dan's doing right now, throwing me curveballs. I'm signing on with you. Emulating me and then trying to re-emulate me and then see who can do the best emulation of me uh, while I'm right here. I don't do above impersonations and I'm not trying to counter program. Okay. Yeah. yeah just, you just, whatever. You, you took what a potentially a funny thing and you started arguing with me and now it's no longer funny. It was funny when I was talking about it, but when you start breaking it down and trying to, then it just becomes not funny anymore. So let's go to a topic that potentially uh, isn't funny, but is certainly down your alley. And that is this clotting of the blood lummy that's looking like strings of silly putty putty coming out of people's veins from the mortician level. Yep. This is a story about it. Yeah, and they talked to uh, one of the uh, the people. America's health officials haven't seemed publicly interested in answering a crucial question. How many illnesses and deaths can be attributed to COVID versus the vaccines or some combination? Today, we look at shocking and graphic evidence that independent researchers are trying to make sense of in the absence of helpful guidance from the usual authorities. A mysterious Mm -hmm. fibrous material being discovered in the veins and arteries of I don't know what what network it is. It's from the uh, it's from real clear politics. It's a big Dead. website. A caution, some of the Do you want me to stop it immediately, Anna? Because it does it's not a one that you recognize or No, I was just curious of someone who's speaking so freely about Images it. Images in our awesome. report are graphic. These vials are basically samples of the white fibrous material that I've been discussing. Richard Hirschman is an embalmer who's been investigating disturbing evidence left by the dead. Mysterious clots appearing in cadavers around the world. Well, the very first photograph I took was in September of 2021. What does that first photograph show? That first photograph shows a very, very large uh, white fibrous looking clot that was literally about the length of the individual's leg itself. Clots are one of the things we run into sometimes in embalming. We're, we're used to that, but these clots are totally different. Oh, no, there it is. To his surprise, the strange, long, fibrous clots started turning up in more and more bodies that Hirschman examined, all of them after COVID. They and- almost look like tapeworms. Yep, Ugh. they sure do. They almost look like, mm-hmm. you know, tapeworms. Uh, they and- almost have a life to them. And the vaccines hit the market. What types of people are you getting? And again, like this is this dude here doesn't have anything to gain. No, and, 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 and he's going to get jobbed out. And I really appreciate he'll probably be dead Thursday. Uh, <laughs> but but, uh, but he's going to get whacked. Man, whistle blow against Big Pharma and see how far you get. Yeah, if you whistle blow, blow, blow if you whistle blow against Boeing and you were onto something, they yeah, can they kill you. Dead. Oh yeah, you whistle blow against, you, you whistle against blow the against the Clintons. Clintons yeah, you get off. Suicide. Go ahead and whistle blow against <laughs> Purdue and get back to me, bitch. You know what I liked more than anything is that the guy actually showed a procedure, mm-hmm. an actual, fit, you know, an embalming procedure where he was actually pulling this stuff out of a person's vein. These clots from. 
Yes, that's a great. By clip. the way, I've tried to mac maximize this, and it's the biggest that it gets. So I'm sorry, it's so so small. Because the majority of the ones that I'm seeing a lot of these clots in are older people. But it doesn't mean it's exclusive to the older people. The first person that I took a picture of was only in their mid fifties, so it's not it's this not necessarily doctor? grandma. He's or an grandpa. embalmer. No, he's an embalmer. Is he a pathologist or is he just a mortician? Uh, he I, seems I, like just a weird ass dude. No, he's an. That means he's an embalmer. Yeah. They're all weird. But I mean, like, does yes. he did he go to school or is he just like? You I know, think you have to go to embalming school. Yes, yes. I think you do. It's, it is a school. It is a school. And I've seen it's him in people as young as twenty. <laughs> so. I mean, he's just showing you the stuff that he's getting out of people that have died veins. He's just painting and, gummy worms. And, this guy's not finding anything. And so, since, and this all is brand new to him. He's been doing it for 20 plus years, and this is all brand new to him. And he find, he found that it started after the COVID-19 vax. Dan, That's who, when this started to rear its ugly head. Dan, who's more of a doctor, an embalmer or a dentist? A dentist is actually Things a doctor. Is, thank you. Worse than the elderly. Like you know, seems like you've been kind of dogging the dentist a little bit there, Seth. No, no, I'm, I'm anti embalmer. I'm, I don't. I think this guy's weird, and I just think that we're it's, we're taking him at his word. We don't know what the hell he's got going I mean, on there. Well, I mean, yes, we. He do. might want to be. He might. We saw. Be, we saw him. I mean, this is not like this is. You don't know what you saw. I saw. I, so Bubba, Bubba. I, I, I saw him pull this material out of a person's vein just now. I saw that. Okay, Bubba. Look at this. Look at that little picture. See that little black thing in the middle that's only about maybe, yeah, right there, from there to there. That's what a normal clot would look like. That long, that big, that dark. Okay. This thing that's like 50 oh. times longer and white, it's like, what is that? Like, I've pulled clots out of people before. We were doing like endarterectomies and doing vascular surgery. I mean, I've, ta I've, de I've thrombectomized people. The clots that we take out are dark and maybe an inch, two inches, three inches. They're not white and 40 inches See, long. Seth, we actually have a doctor to thwart your anti, you know, uh, this guy, you, you, I'm well, sorry. Well, that's fine. To thwart your I hate embalmers fetish. Well, that's fine. I would much <laughs> rather hear from a doctor than a, than a weird embalmer. All right, then, you know? then we got the best of both worlds here. We got a weird embalmer along with a doctor kicker. I'm just saying, I think there can be embalmers that are up to no good. I think Wait, that, that's all I'm saying. Hold on, there's the some embalmers that are up to no good. Haven't you ever heard some of the stories that these morticians uh, yeah. and stuff would do to really hate? Necrophilia. Like, yeah, necrophilia. Necrophiliacs. Like, Which is really a victimless crime if you think about it. Sort of. <laughs> I mean, I thought that's why you get in the business. <laughs> Some of them I, are, do for that. Some listen, of them do for that. Some of them have listen, twisted things. I a lot think, of them in the family. I think just like there was a wink, wink, nudge, nudge for thousands of years in the, in the Catholic uh, religion where if you want to be able to pray on little boys, become a priest, I think there was, I think that that was a thing I think that there's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge on mortician slash embalmers. Whereas if you're into having sex with dead people, this is the what you need to be. I well, think, yeah, I think they're they, not I becoming neonatal nurses. I think they've had that rap. <laughs> I think that rap's been around. Like that For rap's that rap's pretty well known. Mm -hmm. As soon as you say, "Yeah, I'm a mortician," they're like, "Oh, mm -hmm. okay, buddy." You like them cold? Oh, I see how. We, we, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. <laughs> you like you don't know, you like uh, you like cold you like cold sandwiches, right? Cold sandwiches more, don't move around more, much. more than a hot hamburger, right? It's jumpy. But it's not exclusive to the elderly. Hirschman wasn't alone in his observations. He began connecting with embalmers and funeral directors in Canada, the UK, and New Zealand who were reporting the same disturbing phenomenon. So it's six inches, 15, 15, 16 centimeters. Uh, white fibrous clots that have been supplied by embalmers, uh, and they're seeing these all around the world. These long strands coming out of the blood vessels. These have been taken directly from the circulatory system so this this is now several doctors throughout the country and world and world that are seeing the very same thing now if there's one vaccination that the entire world got it was this one like you know i i, I think we've had different types of you know, like I mean, the I entire think, world bubble has probably also got an MMR and yeah, but not, and, and you know, no, uh, hold on. smallpox. And You're right, and polio. those have all probably went through the testing procedures that most drugs or vaccines oh, go definitely, through. Definitely, and so. if there was any kind of signals like this, they would have stopped the campaign right. and reevaluated right. it, and then retweaked it and so brought it out again later. As, as, as worldly vaxxed as we may be with other stuff. 
that other stuff, chances are, had a testing period in order to be the other stuff. Mm-hmm. This And is, it actually worked. This is probably in our lifetime, and maybe forever, the only... the. La- one of the very few vaccines that didn't went, go through any testing. They just rolled it out and said, very get, minimal testing. get it. It went through you about the same to... amount of testing as that submersible by the uh, uh, right. Titanic. Titan. Right. Yes. It was about that well, it was about that well <laughs> researched, about that so, well executed. I had that kind, of, you, that kind of ending. Do you ever see anybody being as, as we continue to progress and distance ourselves from all those that got vaccinated, and we now start to have an influx of people dying, and different pathologists, and med- medical examiners, and embalmers, and morticians <clears throat> are dealing with uh, dead bodies and potentially foreign substances. Within, I mean, can you see where potentially the WHO? I mean, like c- we would have some congressional hearings on this, or is this always going to be just sit down and shut up and let's not make a big deal about this? Two things. First of all, they're they're trying to delay, 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 and get this as far out from the real people who are guilty as possible because they want to hit that five years where the statute of limitations for criminal stuff is over. Secondly. They make it so that anyone that says anything about anything negative having to do with COVID, the treatments, the vaccines, or anything, they make it look like you have a tinfoil hat. And they job you out, and they, they ridicule you, they, they denigrate you, they mock you. You've seen it, and they you've take, experienced they, they it. They take you out, they take your knees out. And so the, 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 the money that supported this narrative that is really deaf to any kind of criticism um, is going to continue to just press on, and we're just going to have to take Plus it. Plus, the people that made these are arguably some of the largest political donors in, yeah. the, war, in the world. Yes. Mm-hmm. But what's and the point? Can you so ask- really want to watch Fauci get crucified? I mean, in my opinion, he he murdered people, in my opinion. He murdered literally hundreds of Talking thousands. About Fauci. Hundreds of thousands of people, maybe millions of people. Twice. Uh, twice. <laughs> and, and so to me, he should be literally like drawn and quartered. I mean, literally like whoa, whoa, cut whoa. him open, whoa, let whoa, his entrails like fall to the ground, cook him so he can smell him, cut him into four pieces and put him in the four corners of America. That's what I think should happen to Fauci, because I think it was that easy. Evil. It was that bad. That is not but, necessarily the opinion of the Bob and Love Sponge program. <laughs> Dan, Dan uh, completely went rogue on that statement, Lone Wolf Willie, and okay. he's not a paid employee. Uh, continue on, Dan. <laughs> All right, Braveheart style. Freedom! <laughs> so I, I really think that's what should happen to him. And and all those people that were guilty of this. But they're all going to say, well, I didn't know. He told me this. They're all going to have it. this Pass deniability. The Pass the back. buck. I just hit. I just went into words. Oh. Jesus, I think I, I just go into words much. Yeah, I see. Start listening. The Bubba the Love Sponge Bye. Show will be back after this. That could be a new thing, though, Bubba, and streaming is where you just fucking, uh, you, I mean, you people don't know what's going on all the time. These are just so distorted. You yeah, you just tell. hit some shit. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. to right. shovel. Right, right. But you did recommend it for huh. elderly people. If you were old, like you were over 65, 70. You COVID before something like that, so you might as well just take the risk. Because you don't worry about something 10 years later. Right, because you're going to be dead. If you're 35, anyway. you're going to have a disease that shows up in 8 or 10 years. It's a big deal. And if you're 35, you're not going to die from COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a line where that the risk and the Resilient. benefit seem yeah. to make it worthwhile. Yeah. It was yeah. old. Um, so it wasn't really based on data, but more based on like probability. Like you're probably going to die in 10 years anyways, so might as well try to live those extra 10 years. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Bubba fan. (laughs) 
Jay Gator, I'm sending you your money back now, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's funny, John Kay. The accent, though. R L W Juju. That that says. Yeah. We love you. I don't, Jay Gator. I don't know what happened, uh, but I uh, I sent you your money back. Hydrogen water bottle, Bubba? Can't you? Of course you know I am. You? Why do you ask a question when you hear me doing it? I base this out. What up, Ellen? I thought you were pouring monster in a cup. Mm -mm. Sorry. That's what it does. That's how it makes it. Is used with hydrogen. No, I think he was just pouring water. In oh. I thought he was pouring. He's so nosy. Sorry, I asked the question. Jay Gator, I don't have a, uh, I gotta get a rumble. I guess that BTLS would work. Check your cash app. Who's Sean? Oh, I thought my shoulder with the PRP injections. Definitely feeling better. Really? Unless it's felt in six months. Do you have more range of motion? Oh, it's like a little <laughs> Some tax 22. I feel like wash my hair, hold it up, and put a shirt on with that. Mr. Carpenter, $100. Very so far. Agree with Dr. Dan. Cash up. Now, is that actually the one doing the developers? Or does it sound like that? The developers found this. All that shit I was looking at was gone. It took like one ten minutes to get in. Yes, I'm going to do that next week. Mm -hmm. so, that'll probably work. Yeah, or. Does your insurance cover that? No. Mm -hmm. Just cover sex changes. <laughs> That's cool. I guess sex changes and abortion, but I can't get my fucking shoulder fixed. All good, man. Is it similar to stem cell? Yeah. yeah. PRP has stem cell. Yeah. <laughs> the Drew McIntyre stuff was great. That was beautiful. Show. Were you sleeping in and missed the first hour of the show? Don't worry. It's all at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. I had um the pot up. Didn't know what happened there. Melissa Carpenter, hundred dollars on the catch up. Fish on the J, twenty five on the PayPal. PayPal Venmo Cash App. All at the Bubba Army.
Appreciate you. Hopefully, let me, uh, Bubba Army. Jeez. Oh. I forgot it. I'm sorry. Not only did you forget it, you blew it. I blew it. Like, I... For forgetting it's like three, four seconds. Like, 15 seconds is... I totally I'm very even... awkward. Like, like, are you? What? What is your problem? It's I, a pregnant pause. What is your problem? I, 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 I was setting you up. Don't forget, Bubba Army. I don't, thought... don't say it now, bitch. Oh, oh. I thought you were just talking to Bubba Army about our our cash app and stuff. Sorry. See, I thought I thought I used to think you and I had better timing than that. You know, I think that you and I we, we used to have you really. You think I think you've lost a little bit of your pickup skills. I, I guess so. I I, I don't know. I mean, the more about... the more monitors we put in front of you, the more uh, it seems the more that you're less engaged with me. Do we need to take you down? <clears throat> like, what's no, your I, problem? We, How'd you miss that? We, How'd you miss that high spot, buddy? I guess I didn't pick up. You were you were going into. Uh, in, I called. Uh, I called the high spot. You should have known. Oh, I, I called up Mr. Carpenter, it. you said Fish on Jay, and then you said, hopefully Bubba Army, and no, I thought you were talking I said, about... don't forget, Bubba, I didn't say, I said, I think I said, don't forget. I don't know which one I said. Okay. Is so, that your normal lead-in for that one? Well, it it doesn't should, matter. He's supposed to be dancing with me at all times. He's my main guy. So he should know when you're passing the ball. He should. Franco, he should $10 on the cash app. He should. Money. He's my Bubba Army alpha co-promoter. Mm -hmm. He knows that. And then sometimes Seth will come in and go, alpha. And then it'll get, be into a whole big alpha talk. But it takes Lummy not whiffing on the alpha, you know, right down the middle, 95 mile an hour, non-moving, fast, four-seam fastball for you to just jack outside the park. You know, a lot of the major league. I mean, I, I I never knew this, but most of major league hitting has become if the guy guesses correctly on what you're throwing, just because they can. The the different balls that a real good pitcher throws are so dramatically different that if you are trying to get wait for one and another one comes, that most people don't have the ability to make that adjustment in swing, and they whiff. So let me, I did, you know, you anticipated a fastball right down the middle. I threw a four seamer right down the middle, no movement. And you exactly knew it was coming, and you just drilled yourself in the ground like the like the cartoons. I was looking at the chick with the big boobs in the stands. Went right by me. What? Well, Understandable. What chick with the big boobs in the stands? That's that hypothetical chick. Yeah, the hypothetical chick. I missed it. You you laid it in there for me, and I got distracted. You got distracted by jugs. Yep, jugs. Mm -hmm. Melissa Carpenter's hundred dollars. I got distracted Thank by. You. All right, Lummy. We, I'm sorry. We, I'm not, I, I can't even set up a Bubba Army Alpha high spot right now because it just seems so corny. So we'll have to wait another day. Um, hopefully tomorrow you won't mess. You won't miss the Bubba Army Alpha high spot because it is coming. It's on its way. It's going to be here soon. It might get here about the same time the basketball shoes get here. I was going to ask. They're about the same time. About the same time. It's a couple weeks. Now, don't forget the basketball shoes aren't for sale. They've already been predetermined. I did buy a couple different extra sizes in each size. I do have a few, but it's I'm gonna. It's thank more. God because I changed my mind. Give me a pair. He's such a dick. <laughs> I want to walk around you remember, international mall. Do you remember Lummy, like how it. much he made fun of us? Yes, he, he was the those. only one. I think yeah. even I think even Anna might have asked for a pair. I did. Yeah, it was, it was iconic. And it was Seth and Jay. Seth and Jay. Yeah. So, you know what? Screw both of them yep. too. I think Babyface was in there too. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> Seth, three work. Those three need to have a show. You want to talk about a podcast right there? So any so anyway, Lummy, hopefully the alpha and the shoes are all coming relatively soon because I cannot wait to get these shoes out into the marketplace and uh, you know people to be taking pictures of them and, and and various things like that. I can't wait. Today's after show will be a podcast only. It'll be my it's it's everybody but Dan and Jay and well it, and Brian. It's just the original crew. Boy, Seth and 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 Lummy, did you guys? Um, have an opportunity to listen to last Thursday show. Sure did, and I talked to some people that thought it was pretty ridiculous. <clears throat> what What did you what 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 are you hearing back? <clears throat> I'm just asking. Uh, how they just pretty much parroted you, and the, you were getting really annoyed on the break, and they weren't picking up on it, and they were just over talking to you the whole time, and people could tell that you were getting pretty pissed off, and they don't understand how they didn't pick up on it. 
Yeah. I texted Babyface. He's like, man, I thought today's show was one of the best ever. I'm like, well, he's what's... himself over? It was like, it sucked. It's like, well, you know... And he even engaged me on Twitter. Oh, yeah. I, I saw I, that. I asked Twitter, man. Was this, I mean, did the show sound as bad as, I, as it felt delivering? I felt as if... I don't know what I exactly tweeted or not. It was something to do with... Anna and and Brian just being up my ass nonstop, <clears throat> and I was just like, man. Usually I got Seth in here. To, he, Seth usually doesn't have my back, but he does with those two usually because he knows I'm fighting an uphill battle. Those two. Yeah, and you, I, yeah, I know, I know how to. I feel like I, I know how to, you know, play my role when Brian's in here, right? And sometimes that's having to defend me a little bit. Maybe you maybe you wouldn't want to, but you're like, I better get. I need Spongeo needs a little help. Over oh yeah, here. I love Brian, but sometimes you know he'll get like a zinger about your son or something. You're like, oh man, ah, uh, you know. Yeah. Even I flashed him a look when he did that. But a lot of a, but it seems like a lot <laughs> of people stand out. Seems like a lot of people were okay with, with the show. They seem to even like it more. I don't know if people I like when you that. get. I don't know if people like when they you get do. annoyed. They do. This is unlike any any other talk show. Dynamic in America and the fact that uh, the audience hates the host the most. <laughs> I mean, for real. I mean, for, for the. I mean, for real. Like the audience hates the host the most. It'd be like if 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 we are a Super Bowl winning you know football team and the quarterback you know I'm Tom Brady and and but I'm the most hated for, I sent you for whatever post. reason. I sent you your post with Babyface's response. Yeah, Babyface was the first one to respond and starts engaging me. I'm like, I'm glad he's out of the studio. I won't see him for a whole week. I want to say my piece. And then he's the first one to say a piece. You needed the impressions, right? <clears throat> and that was that response. Uh, was it me <laughs> or was Babyface uh, extra dicky today? Be honest. Now, let me, where do I hit? Uh, and then, oh, and then yeah. Brian goes, I remember when Babyface, is this? Yeah, that's him. I remember when Babyface went after your adopted parents and said that they didn't only not love you but weren't your real parents. That was pretty dickish. Oh, wait. <clears throat> well, listen, I only went there after he opened the dick gate. Do you know what I'm saying, though? Like, I didn't... Yours I was didn't, a retaliation. Yeah, mine was a retaliation. You can't use... Yeah, a, hurting people hurt people. Right. When you hurt me first, and then I come back with a zinger that hurts even more, bitch, you started the hurt game, right? Yeah. yeah. Get the hell out of here, Brian. Snowflake son of a bitch. Anyway, Lummy, I, I, I don't think that there'll ever be an opportunity for, I mean, it was just a very rare, almost you and Seth being gone at the same on the same day is as rare as the solar eclipse we're fixing to see today. <laughs> <laughs> There's just sure no is. other instances where you know USF would be having their spring fling football uh, opening uh, deal with all their digital partners that you and Rhett just have to be there. Yep. Which I which I gladly had no problem with, and then Seth out of town on kind of a semi family gimmick. So sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry too. And then I'm just that yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Lummy. I feel like I should be sorry here. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, I would. I mean, any sorry from you would not even be like, like you're just trying to cover your ass. Sorry, it, because not, not because since then you've not said anything, so that even made it hurt worse. Oh, yeah. Here's praying, Grandma. She's fixing a. She poor Grandma. She's alleged, allegedly fate. Here, here we go. Talks about uh, praying, Grandma. Rebecca, I can't quite see. LA friends, the friends has reportedly been found guilty by a DC jury after she briefly entered the Capitol building on J six. Glad to see our ju- our justice system uh, going after some hard hitting criminals. Uh, Grandma spent ten minutes inside of the Capitol building and was seen praying outside the building for about an hour. She's on film peacefully walking around the Capitol building and was spotted speaking to a police officer. She was is allegedly facing $210,000 fine and one year in jail. The Ooh. video begins. Uh, the, video, the video below was taken in March when she was uh, driving by the Capitol building. <clears throat> I guess reflecting potentially what she may be facing. Reflecting potentially oh, what she that. may oh, yeah. be facing. Right. Here we go. 
I read that one fast. Here's grandma who could be facing a year in prison. Poor thing. $210,000. Where do you come up with that? Most people can't. Most grandma ain't got 210. No. And 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 how do you how do you just like how do you adjust that amount? Oh, it's 50,000 dinner and then 50,000 cuz you were walking around, then another 50,000 cuz you stayed longer than an hour. And then uh, another fifty thousand for one, and then another ten thousand for uh, for some administrative fees. Like, how do you come up with how, how, what's the value of grandma? You know, what what type of how how, how do you fig make that figure? You get to make it up. Now that bitch better go to Amscot and get that money. <laughs> She better call. Hold on. I'm going to make a great, great, great reference. So only us Kerbers were no. She better call J.G. Wentworth. Right. Oh, J.G. <laughs> Wentworth. <laughs> Seth, you, you get the Curb reference. I right? do. It was yeah, the exactly. series finale last night. I did not watch it, but I watched... Um, the series finale? Yeah. Like the whole, like the last episode? It's done. Ever? Have you, did, did you see it? No. Not you. you no, know. I had, no, I watched Mania. I have not seen the last two episodes. I'm going to watch Oh, man. Yeah. The one, the one that you've missed is good as hell. I'm ready. <laughs> Wait till you see it. I know it's been it's been busy. I'm ashamed of myself. Here's grandma. Poor grandma. They don't got grandma doing anything wrong at all. Like grandma didn't bust a window. Grandma didn't take anybody's <clears throat> lectrum. What, is that what those, those are called? Huh? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, Nancy Pelosi's. Oh yeah, yeah. Is, is it called a le- le- a le- lectern? Lectern. Lectern. Is she a trespasser, a looter, perhaps? I mean, yes. I mean, she's probably trespasser. guilty of trespassing. trespassing. She's probably guilty of trespassing mm-hmm. and praying outside the building for an hour. Oh yeah, that's guilty. So now I'm not talking about the loon that had, that had the buffalo horns on and it was running through. And I really don't know what he did wrong. We had him on. <laughs> other than he, other than he, he was did. on the show. Yeah, I, I, I know he. I know he had him on. What's his name? I forget his name. It doesn't matter what he did. He's the face of January 6th. Yeah, he really he is. is. He is. QAnon Shaman. He's the face of January 6th. He really is. And I think he's facing what? He's out. Yeah, he was here. He's 18 months like, or something. Yeah, like 18 or 20 months. All right, here we go. Here's Grandma. She's so she, sad. <clears throat> she's reflecting upon her J 6th actions and potentially what she might be facing. <laughs> My own country is treating me like a criminal. Well, first of all, this, this is a bad angle. <laughs> well, not only that, but <laughs> she's a horrible fake li- fake crier. Yeah, she's working. Come on, that. Grandma. Grandma's looking for clicks. <laughs> Just left. That my own country is treating me like a criminal. I mean, for a grandma, she's not too bad. <clears throat> not for 70. I mean, if she was 70 and a zillionaire wanted me to come over twice a week and blast it, I would. Mm. Because I believe that my, they stole my the rightful president. And just standing up for my country, it makes me a criminal. And Listen, it's... do you know how many people that I've been rooting for that didn't make president over my lifetime? Half of probably. Half, exactly, if not more. I mean, you know, you're, I mean, listen, 50 50 at best, you're going to, I mean, because just because that's just the way it goes. Democrats win for like, you know, two or three elections. Republicans get in there for two or three. By the way, this is what happens when grandkids don't call their grandmas. They exactly. have to go out and they have to start praying and doing all sorts of weird shenanigans. That's right. You better have to make sure little, them. little Sammy better be calling at least tonight or she'll be, she'll be breaking it down like Damn this. Right. It's not right. It feels so weird to be here. Three over three years ago, I was here. All right, whatever. I mean, don't don't you think that they've that they've really blown this this January sixth thing just completely out of proportion and out of water and completely earmarked way too much time in trying to just make this a bigger thing than it really was. You know what I'm well, saying? I mean, they, they've 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 drawn such a line in the sand, and if you had anything to do with any of it, they've you know essentially labeled you as a permanently dead to the world person. 
And but you they know, went after that, you. They prosecuted. They you. They went after you. They prosecuted. But even if you like supported it, even if you like said, "Listen, you know, the, 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 for the first time <clears throat> during the entire five years that Trump was running and be, being president, there was protest after protest after protest with fires, with destruction, with graffiti, with statues getting pulled down, with fences getting ripped out, with with governor mansions and 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 state legislatures getting occupied." And that happened constantly for five years. One time, the conservatives go out and protest, and they all get thrown in jail. So it's it's it, it really does seem dis, disproportionate. It I seems don't know. unfair <laughs> to me. It's it, just like they weren't trying to take over the world. They weren't trying to like you know end the government. They were protesting. They were pissed because they saw an election that didn't make sense to them. I just I just don't know. I think we really have our eyes off the ball as to what really really is going to destroy our country. And that is these Ill- illegal immigrants and aliens that are now and I and on our Twitter, let me, it's kind of my little niche that I kind of get into. Yeah. And that is all the crimes that are happening now by uh, illegal aliens and uh, these illegal aliens, you know, go, get it. They get into Texas and then they start warming their way throughout our country. We're just going to continue. I mean, you're, you're seeing issues now like, you know, in, you know, Iowa, and <clears throat> Illinois. Not just the big host cities like New York and, and, and things like that. You're seeing homicides and murders by illegal aliens. And at first you saw it monthly. Now we're starting to see it weekly. There, I just tweeted something a couple days ago, Lummy. Uh, another, another illegal alien killed a 15 or 16-year-old girl. And like, like it's going to just, you know, it's 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 only going to be a matter of time where all the, I don't know, what, 1.3 million illegal immigrants, undocumented illegal immigrants that we've let into our country. Wait, wait, wait. Since when? Since like, like January? Million. Yeah. The, bro, it's it's closer to like 8 to 10 million. Right. It's not 1.3 million. It's about Maybe 8 million. Maybe he means since this last year or something. I think, I think since 2024. Oh, like in twenty four. Yeah, it's I about mean, a million so far this I, year. I yeah. think I've heard it about a million three yeah, since, that, I believe since that. January one. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And they're just and like they are 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 doing bad things. They have no place to live. We are putting them up in the Roosevelt uh, Roosevelt Hotel hotels. We are treating them. We are treating the illegal aliens that come into our into our country illegally. We are treating them. Better than we treat the average guy or woman or American who doesn't have a job or lost their job and doesn't have any health insurance, doesn't have a paycheck, doesn't really have a place to stay, getting ready to lose everything they got. And we're not sub- giving them money, hardly any subsidies. Meanwhile, it's it's I mean, I just I, I don't understand how we can have this mentality when we have so many people in dire of our own, our own citizens, white, black, you know, fat, and our white, veterans. We look like male, such pussies, honestly. Male, female, and all we are are taking care of people that aren't even from here. Yeah, the frustrating and thing is, Baba, is like we're spending billions of dollars taking care of people that don't belong Jeez. here. And at the detriment of our own citizens and our own veterans, we're sending billions of dollars to foreign countries to help with their problems, and yet we have bridges that don't hold up when they get hit by a tugboat. So it's, it's pathetic. I spend $50,000 a year in taxes, and my streets are so bad that it destroys my cars. The mile, the last mile and the first mile of my drive every day is nothing but potholes and broken roads. And it's pathetic. But you go to like the crappy parts of town, and the roads are perfect. So I think that, that people in America that have been doing what they're supposed to do, doing what they were told to do as children, work hard, study hard, stay out of trouble, have a family, buy a house, send your kids to school, make sure they get educated, keep them out of jail, keep them off the stripper pole. All those things now are no longer being rewarded. And what's being rewarded is going against the system, fighting it saying that you want to be, not work, that you don't want to be who you are, that you don't want to do what you're supposed to do, that you want to just suck off the teat of America and be a cow. I'm sick of it. Wow. Me and Seth are thinking about identifying as women and going playing for US, uh, UC, uh, UCF uh, girls basketball team. Oh, yeah, I'm I go to the games then. 
I'm also thinking about sneaking out of the country and sneaking back in, so I can Make get more money. Get dude, you rich. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really the move. I think that we also yeah. Be and I, you here. know, here's the deal: get little Steffi and pawn her off on one one of the grand one of the set of grandparents. Okay, I know she's good with both, right? No, I got to smuggle tell- her across. I get I get a that's I get right. a seven year old oh, in here. I mean, she, I'm probably oh, getting a, a big suite at the she, Ritz oh, or whatever. You know what? That's a kicker. Yeah. She's probably a kicker. Absolutely, I'll probably yeah. get an extra, you know, a stipend, another gift card. You bring, get two or three family members bring, in for that. Bring Phoebe and uh, bring and your parents up. We, we, yep. Yes. I mean, it can, let's no, like, it, there's I, probably a lot of complaining that would be happening. Let's not bring the parents. <laughs> Let me just do this on my own, guys. I'll be complaining yeah. enough. Well, not, but not only that, but you want to be proud to know that you orchestrated this on this your own. You don't want any help for this. You want to be able to pound your chest and be like, man, we get $2,100 free because I did a whole big, you know, across the border cape. And Seth is a great swimmer. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Yeah. You, want, you, yeah, don't, want, you don't want Elise to take any credit for that. No, say, it's just being, being the coyote. Say, I mean, this will be, I mean, this will be you know, at, at family reunions, this will be spoke about. The great Seth Kushner. The you know, did you hear what Seth did? What? Seth smuggled his entire family down to Mexico, then brought them back in <laughs> as the illegals, and he's making 2200 bucks a month, kicked up doing card shows. My parents are finally proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing, he's taking the 2100 doing Mega Pack blasters, and, and, he, and he's one of the biggest guys. He's, he's the Mr. Beast of, of, of baseball cards on YouTube. What a life, sneaking back into America and selling baseball cards on YouTube. Can you? I mean, honest to God, can you write a better, make you happy script? I see why people are coming over here now. It's really the perfect scenario. It really is. Who's the new Fox 13 uh, gimmick up there? Again, oh, Regina oh. Gonzalez. Oh, yeah, she's, look at, look at she's her. pretty fire. Looks like she literally just got out of like some dude's house to kind of put a little makeup on. Yeah. Hair's kind of effed up a little bit. Sunday she's, morning walk. Th- that, that, the walk of shame. The walk of shame. Uh, when I return... Uh, Russell Simmel, Simmons, the the big rap guy, you know, what mm-hmm. was it? well, he wasn't he wasn't part of. Um, was Russell Simmons part of Run DMC? No, his brother. His brother was. Hmm. He was more of the on the record end of the deal, right? Yeah, Russell oh Simmons, yeah. Right. Producer and owner of the label. And Absolutely. Things. Well, his daughter, she's twenty one. Uh, is her name a co- a- Aoki? Aoki. Aoki. Yeah, well, she's not dating this 65-year-old dude. Jesus. He's a restaurateur uh, in New York, and uh, it's like, I forget how much, like, 44, Dan, this is right down your alley, a 44-year <laughs> difference. Wow. I mean, Dan, let's just be honest. Before I go into work, <laughs> did we not have this conversation? And that being this, kind of calling you out a little bit. Ho- hope nobody gets mad at me. And, and, and don't forget that we're just, you know, we're in the business of shock and awe and just, you know, whatever. A lot of time at our family is expense. You know, our families get not just not necessarily will be proud by some of the things that we say. Somewhat embarrassed at times, but anyway, Dan, at your wedding, at your wedding, you took me aside and said, "I was like, man, your wife, your new wife, is so beautiful. She's so young. Was she like twenty two when you married her? Something like that? Twenty one. Twenty one. Just just turned twenty one. How old are you? <clears throat> Thirty nine. Right. So eighteen. So I told Dan, I said, oh, my God, you know, she's beautiful. She's just since she's so young. And you said to me, and I quote, my first wife is 21. My second wife is in middle school right now. And my third wife hasn't even been born. <laughs> did I you, heard him say it. I will you, go to commercials you, with that. <laughs> Yes, this is a daily telethon. We gotta keep the lights on somehow. So don't forget PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo. All at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Bubba the Love Sponge. We'll be back after this. Some grocery items and a bunch of stuff was happening all at once when I walked in the door. Bring anything in? I was walking in the door, Dan. No, I didn't bring your shit in. Can I open this bubble? Have a weekend. We do. It's great. Right then. Next. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Good, good. You How didn't slam the door today, so was, that's it. Yeah. How was your girlfriend? Huh? Oh, was great. Girlfriend? It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Cool. A lot of fun. Thank you. Guys. I'll throw it over you next. Seth, you got something to open it with? Uh, no, you got my, you know, my hands. I need to get a good grip here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's not taped too hard or anything. Okay. I brought a pair of those glasses, man. You can't see shit through them. Oh, the... Do you want to look at them, Bubba? 
What are they? The the solar eclipse glasses. I, I brought a pair if you wanted to see them. Yeah, bring them up. Okay. I'd put them on and walk up there, but I'd walk right into the fucking wall. Bring them up, bring them up. You cannot see anything through them. It's pretty amazing. Now, where do you get them? 7 Eleven for a dollar at the desk. Oh, that's 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 it. That's all they are. Yep. And then put them on, you can't see anything. So you just go, hey, it's 7 Eleven, you just buy them. Yep, for a dollar. I got four for four dollars and like 32. Oh, you can't see nothing. Nothing. Because I was going to come in here, walk in, be funny. I'm not going to one sex. You're done. No, like right now, I could poke on you. <laughs> what I'm saying is like, but like, what I'm saying is like, how, how can you even see what the eclipse? I don't know either. Look at this stuff. Have you ever yet? So it's like, on. It's like, you can't see shit. It might as well be blinders, like when you're being taken oh hostage. Oh my god. They're being taken hostage. Where are you going? I don't know. Yeah, don't put those on. They're going to sex traffic you as soon as it happens. <laughs> <laughs> coming across the border. The traffic, they hope. tackle you immediately. I hope they'll traffic me. China. Have you seen these things? Where's it going, though? 7-Eleven. I mean, exactly. Like, nothing. Are those, those your glasses? Yeah, they're looking at it. I just showed them and you cannot see a thing. Like, zero. I can't even oh, see the target, targets. motherfucker. Yeah. But put it right up on life. And I don't think you can see pretty much anything. Wow, you need welding glasses. Well, these are welding glasses. You can't see anything. one of those random honeydew missions. What? I rarely get sent on them, but I got sent on a honeydew mission. Honey, can you do me a favor? Yup. Oh, okay. Careful, I think there's some stuff on the bottom of that one. There's some stuff on the bottom of this one, too. Yeah, I know you leave the correct instructions, but he was out there ringing doorbells and stuff. The, the Uber guy? Yeah. It wasn't the Uber guy, it was the other guy. Shop. Shop. I watched them. They were both coming in as I was getting in. It's like, hey, I saw your newspaper there on the yeah, I just yelled to him. I said, you can just leave it right there. I said, just go in the studio. What's going on around here? Nothing. I was just checking Lobby. He was worried about something. <laughs> just had to just listen to his lungs. Hear any gurgling? No, I didn't have any gurgling. Why are you so fucking sweaty? We're watching comments. What happened? I just got a close to you, so I'm sweaty. I asked you about the injection. Oh, for the for the high hydrosis. It's like this. It just even the fur just starts sweating. Yeah, I just got close to you, start sweating. 
Is it white coat syndrome again? I think it's my, I think my penis was too close to it. It was. Oh, I can feel it. I think you put the banana in your pants. Oh, okay. <laughs> You only listen to your lungs if my dick's against your arm. Alpha man that wears women's deodorant. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. What would, um, let me see. What would a 44 year age difference look like for you, Dan? Let me see. 58 minus 44. A 14. Maybe a 13 year old. Your daughter. Okay, she's 16. Much. She's 16. <laughs> Still. Yeah. I, wonder if there's ever been, I wonder if there's ever been a guy. Of course. I wonder if there's ever been a guy that was like a stud like Dan. And you, as soon as your daughter's you know, hottest best friend turned 18, you started dating her. Would that, would that be pimp or what? Yeah, I'm sure she'd kill me. I mean, first of all, I'm not trying to talk about your particular daughter or mm-hmm. even you particularly. I'm talking about a made-up guy. Uh-huh. This hypothetical the, the, guy? This hypothetical dude that, you know, was Dr. maybe Stan. a doc, was like maybe a doctor Dr. Stan. and a lawyer, you know, and he, he had a lot of money and he was good looking and he used to, he just walked around with big D energy and, you know, kind of a narcissistic, you know, just. Dick. Yeah. Kind of like the way you are. Wasn't that the premise of American Beauty? Kind of. <clears throat> yeah, I guess. Kevin Spacey. <clears throat> great acting. But, but Dan walks around, you know, like, you know, Dan just Dan just walks around like like he's kind of a dick. Not really. You, really? Yeah, you, know, you, you just put you, me out that way. You, I don't walk around like that. Really? Yeah, Jay, I don't, just, dude. Jay, I'm a Jay, nice guy. Jay, Come on. Jay, let's throw oh, I think we have I think we have an unbiased opinion yeah. here. Mr. Peacock over here. Sort okay, of. Hold on. No, hold <laughs> on. I mean, how does he start? So yeah, I'm not gonna say you're a dick yeah. when you call me oh, Mr. Yeah, Peacock. On. Dan, you are so stupid. Um, I mean, guilty for, as charged. For, for being, so hold on. Dan, for being as educated and smart as you are. Sometimes you are the dumbest. In the, like, I don't think you even understand how to work. Um, we're going to go, you know I'm going to go to Jay for validation on your douchiness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're nice to him and, and you're cool to him and you put him over a little bit, he comes back with, you know what, Dan is, uh, is a guy that gets on the radio and says a lot, but deep down he's a great husband. He's a great, great father. Uh, he, uh, he's a great businessman. He not only is my partner, but he's he's been a plastic surgeon for 25 plus years he's just a hell of a dude a lot of people have danny all wrong a lot of his dickness is just stickness if you will but instead you automatically talk bad about the guy the one dude there's only one dude that has the standing to be able to analyze you and that is your younger brother and you don't even when we go to introduce him you you, you act like a dick to him I so what do you what think Pat, he's gonna say i could tell what path he was going towards so. no you didn't no, spat yeah. no you break. didn't <laughs> What if, you, um, what if what if what if what if you would have said, Jay, my my fine younger brother? What do you? How do you feel about those allegations, my friend? I would have said that's just his on-air persona. It's theater of the mind. It's like thinking that Arnold Schwarzenegger is the Terminator. But after that comment, I said, Bubba, there's been a clear blurring. <laughs> Danny is Doctor Dan Esquire off the air. He treats everyone the same way as he does on the air. <laughs> He's a complete dick. He's a yeah. complete dick. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot so, of times. So, so wait a second. Hold that's on, hold a, on. That's a response and, and, to what and, you said. And, and then there's a lot of times. He thinks I'm being serious, but he doesn't understand what you're working with. But, 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 and there's a lot of times where Steve actually has to tell him, Dan, you're not on the air. Right. That's <laughs> true. And you do too. Mm-hmm. Because on the air, I do nothing but help all you guys. So that's all right. I no, don't do, hold on. You just did the examination. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Are, exactly. you trying to, are you trying to say that, like, hold on. Just and bottom be, a shake. Oh, God. I, just because you gave Lummy a... <laughs> Uh, a a, che- a little bit of a chess listen to, mm-hmm. and like like y- y- and you help us out like that warrants you being able to act like a dick on the air. Because I'm not really a dick. I'm the kindest, gentlest, most giving guy you know. You just like to 
reprogrammed that as being a dick. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Let me text me like for 20 on. minutes last I night about the stupid freaking stethoscope. I don't ever Uncle give Eric. you a script to tell <laughs> you you have to say A, B, C, or D. You are a wild card over there, and you can say anything you want. That's you true. know that. Yes, did did true. Bubba tell you to call me a peacock? Yeah. No, that just came no. Okay. No, you just know what Bubba, you know, right. you know what Bubba, you know what Bubba would have said? <laughs> what? If privately, had I been able to, hey, Dan, put Jay over before, you know, you're going to need him to get your back here. <laughs> yeah. So put him over. Be like, yeah, you know what? It'd, it'd be interesting to see what my kick-ass brother who let me into his firm has to say. Jay, how no, you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are yeah, you, my yeah. friend? Now, how, am, I, am I that big of a douche, Dan, buddy? No, no think, of course you know, not. Dan's just mad because if we were both peacocks, I'd have bigger, better feathers than him. <laughs> I'll wear $100 in the cash have, have, oh my God, you have more baby. colorful feathers. They just wouldn't be bigger. Okay. They may be more colorful. God, you just you just won't shut up for being a dickness. <laughs> just be quiet. So is Lemmy gonna die or what? Yeah, no, yeah you I were checking out. Is. Hold on, it was during the hot mic, and I and I hear some kind of situation going on, and I go, "What's going on?" Because I can't see over there. And Anna's going, "Dan's uh, ch- giving Lummy uh, a chest examination." And so, did you have your stethoscope out? Yes, I did. <clears throat> okay, and uh, by the way, that it makes it it makes it official. Like a doctor has to have a stethoscope, right? Yes. I mean, <laughs> and Dan has to have a gold one. Oh my! God. No, Doctor Dan Esquire doesn't bleed over into the real world. Yeah, bubble. exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Johnny, I have to have everything. Gold douchebag does not no. bleed over no. into no. the real world. As he was checking Lummy's chest, his his uh, stethoscope is gold. Of nice. course, it is. So. You, what let me what were you let me what were you complaining about that you needed Dan to to check you out what's wrong I just had some uh, really uh difficult uh difficulty breathing uh last night okay. and I had some pain in there uh and he's I having a heart to... attack are you fat I mean like do you no, have your fat <laughs> no it have you had your fat attack. clogged up your veins no I uh Walker was pretty congested uh, over the weekend and I started getting congested and then uh, my my, I was I was having trouble breathing last and, night. Yeah, where's the mountain of a man that can fight off anything that well, I, I did? Know? I mean, I came in. Uh, Doctor Dan cracked my sternum, and uh, I'm good to go. What do you mean cracked your sternum? He, he, He's he also got, a chiropractor. Yeah, I don't he got know me on the ground and cracked Dan. my sternum. So Dan, did you check him out? And what what what's your diagnosis of why he was uh, having a difficult breathing last night? He had a uh, sort of a sternal costal. Pathology. Oh, that what? doesn't sound good. <laughs> that sounds terminal. He had a sternal kernel. Exactly. Yeah. I, mean, oh, yeah, I misunderstood him, Lummy. You're, you're a, a goner. He had a, he, had a, he had a sternal kernel mastectomy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Lummy, what'd you die of? A sternal journal st- of just has to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to the medical examiner. Now, so, Dan, what, what does he have something wrong with him? Well, you know, first of all, he fell through a window. This weekend, okay. like a glass window. Is he a yeah. like he's a weekend? homeboy. Fell through a glass window and didn't get shredded. I don't know how he is did it. He is Lummy. obviously a god. Let me. Yes. What? 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 what fell off a ladder. Tell, what? what? Yes. How are you just now finding this out at night? I, and why is, does Dan know? And I don't. Lummy. I knew. I knew about it Lummy, too. You, know you did you, too. You know who your you master, told us about it. You know who your master is. I am your master. Yes. I have you stockholmed. <laughs> How do I not know any? Because you were doing your hydrogen water gimmick, and we were listening to. Let me tell us how he fell through a window. Lummy, what happened? Oh, I was just on the ladder. Uh, the house. <laughs> you know, <I'm> <laughs> By the way, no wonder he's not hitting the alpha high spots, Bubba. So, a ladder he's got injury. Yeah. He's got sternal kernel. No wonder, he's no, got no kernel. wonder he, missed, he missed the alpha high yeah, spot. Sorry. He's got sternal kernel. Yeah. Allow me the Yeah. So and, you're standing on a ladder at your at your at your property that you're working on in Tampa. Yeah. And uh, the ladder, I was coming down from the front, and uh, obviously I'm pretty fat. The One of the legs of the ladder went into the dirt, oh. which caused the ladder to go, and I went straight into the uh, the bottom part of the window. Oh, the, the ladder sank into the dirt? Correct. Oh. You didn't have anyone holding the ladder? And where was no, the, oh, God, okay. no. Well, Come on. Where's, where's, There's where's, been a comparative fault on Lummi's part. Where's the window located? Uh, on the side of the house and uh, one of the bedrooms. And so you're going down... <laughs> Going down, going down the ladder, and your body's now beside a window, and then the leg f- falls out, and do you go into the window? Yeah, I went into the bottom part of through the window. The window. Yeah. Did Are you, you have, thinking you're going to die as you, as this is happening? Are you thinking that like like you're about you to get shredded? You, oh, yeah. you know, you could have like cut a major artery no, in your no, leg or yeah. something like that. Well, I mean, he couldn't do anything at that point, right? No, no. He just. 
Were you bleed alone? Bleed out. You just bleed out. If it could be a femoral artery, if his leg got cut, that literally could bleed out in what? How long, Dan? Seconds. <clears throat> right. Oh, great. Perfect. Lummy, no, are I'm you having be... anything to drink? I mean, what's no, the, the Lummy, are you doing? Dirt... I, Lummy, are you doing drunk construction again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> He's no. blaming it on Walker's cold, but really, we're starting to get the truth here. So, Lummy, what did you even get? A, did you have jeans on? No, like I only went in from my torso up, so and my arm was the first thing to go through it. <laughs> so I only broke the bottom part of it. Uh, still, <laughs> just my torso. It just sucks. I got to replace the window. It just sucks. I got to replace the window. What was the call like when you had to tell Ashley? Oh, I just sent her a text saying, hey, uh, just so you know, it's going to take me probably another 30 minutes to clean up the window that I just went through. (laughs) 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 Thank God you're not working on the uh, Empire State Building. I mean, mean, you know how catastrophic that could have been? Oh, yeah. It could have been horrible. The tile guy, tile guru, was there, and he ran in when he heard all the glass shattering, and he he thought- I mean, it could have cut. If you you know, it could have cut your elbow all up. It could have cut your- Leg up, it could have cut that really important artery in your leg. I mean, his yeah. face, the money maker, the money <clears throat> maker. Yeah. I mean, you've already been attacked by a dog in your face. And now, you need another one on the now, now you got now, now you got a big window high spot. Yeah, and you clumsy oof. I mean, like, are you, I mean, are you how much, to- how much longer are you gonna be working on this place? You've been working on it for years. How much longer until it's officially done? I'd say another month or so. The it's like the moves in. Egyptian pyramids. Yeah, exactly. Years, you know? So so hold on. So in a month or two, is that when you guys are gonna move in? Yeah, or, or rent it. What? Or rent it. Or rent it. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. Well, good luck on that. Yeah, I mean, if I keep breaking things, it's going to take longer. A little bit so. longer. <laughs> so, <laughs> Seth, you got a package. It's been oh, it's, it's been kind of eating you alive. <laughs> Probably Anna eating her alive, even though she. No, she's... I just know it's cards. I have no interest. Oh, okay. okay, so Thank you have you. no. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah no. So, who who sent you a package here, Seth? Berto Perez. <laughs> Berto Perez. Yes. And it's uh, addressed to you. Yes. And um, I'm assuming this is a a, a fine fan that has maybe sent you some. What what truly makes you happy in life? A fine fan. Berto is the man, dude. Berto's like the most positive <clears throat> now, guy there now, is. Now, are these sent to you personally and they're yours? Or do they go on the break show? You know, like, do they, you know, like what? Or maybe they're not even cards. These aren't maybe, cards. Or they're, maybe they're mementos. or like little toys. Children's toys? I think he's in the I think he's in the toy collection. They're collectibles, are you, are you like Dan. a toy guy now? <laughs> collectibles. I mean, he's he's in, a, this is like a, open up those surprise he's, eggs. He's not in the toy guy. He's in the collectible guy. Sasha Banks and uh, Bianca Belair for my daughter. Right. Oh, now, are okay. those That's worth cute. anything? Are those just for your for Sethy to tear apart? No, those are for my daughter. Berto asked. He knows who my daughter's favorite wrestler is, and he wanted to. Uh, he wanted to get. Now, when her you something. give That's when cool. you give a figurine of your of your daughter's favorite wrestler, what does she does she take them and like act like she's jumping off the top rope and like she climbs up to the ceiling fan and do a does a double high spot and the model comes down on the one doll goes down on the one doll. You know, does she do? I mean, like, does she does she play dolls? Yeah, we do. Uh, we do orgies and stuff like that with the dolls, and I show her how you know everything like that, and then yeah, when I'm not there, showing her how to do the sexual stuff she just has them like jumping off the top rope and everything she'll oh. do like the exorcist with the cross yeah all right let's see you got something else here bubba this is really this is really packaged well this is a car break oh, this, i'm sorry this is a memorabilia break no i got just got oh hell yeah well, hold on it, hell it, it, yeah it is a memorabilia break this guy sent you memorabilia am i not right yeah no this is gunther uh gunther autograph eight by ten by who by, by Gun- Gunther. Gunther, the greatest Gunther. intercontinental champion of all time. Oh, he what? dropped it this weekend. I, he's he's one of my favorites. So Berto sent that. Gunther. Hell yeah! Mm-hmm. Thanks, dude. There you S- go. Something for me, something for the kid. I'm the man. Love working here. The Thanks, 21 year old model and Harvard graduate Aoki Lee confirmed dating 60. 60- Hold on, she Are they nude. She's a Harvard graduate. I heard that I too. So, yeah. Wow. Five-year-old founder of the. I mean, does that that re- as I'm, that's impressive. As I'm, as I'm getting into suits, I'm in the fifth season of Suits. Uh, man, they don't even their law firm won't even hire you unless you're uh, Harvard. Wow. Is is it like is Harvard Law School as prestigious as this show makes it? Like, um, yes, it's, Yale's the most prestigious law school, followed by Harvard. But there are certain law schools that are known for certain things. So we have a niece who's going to either be able to get a full ride to a Pennsylvania school or go to Stanford, but she wants to be an international, like State Department. You go to Stanford, period. Did she go so, to Harvard Law? This chick, or is she just Harvard? Went to Harvard? Well, under, undergrad doesn't matter. It's really difficult to get I in. I know, but is it that difficult when your dad's like a billionaire or whatever? Nope. And you're black. Nope. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So I don't exactly. know <laughs> oh. exactly. how great that is. I have to see her SAT scores. You know what I mean? You know, Russell Simmons is your dad. You're hot. 
Kimura, whoever is her mom. Arafina restaurant group, Asaf, after their encounter in St. Barth's, as- no, no. She's so smart. She's dating a 68 year old. Yeah, I'm done with it. So this, you know, we, we're, I'm good. I'm gonna move on. But I am gonna talk about the Harvard School of Law. Is it like, do they, if you're, if you, like, for instance, Dan, you went to Stetson, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, do the people at Harvard learn the same stuff you did at Stetson? And mm-hmm. what makes it so much? It's like- hard to get in. That's why. It, no. it's, I'm assuming it's pretty much the same education you could get at like most schools. But the reason why Harvard is, is so spectacular and, and Yale and all those other Ivy Leagues is because it's so hard, or at least it used to be so hard to get into those schools. That's so, why people look so at the them to be so much. So the prestigiousness is more... It's just about the entry. It's not that the, the, the one class that Dan took that he could have taken at Harvard... Correct. It's going to be taught any differently. It's just hard to get in. But I find it, it interesting how... Anna knows so much about law school. <laughs> right. When I have two lawyers that don't <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. I, I mean, I heard Jordan Peterson no, talking about this when she so interviewed people. That and there's also there a little is, bit of nepotism. Yeah. There's, they there's they do nepotism. let family members in who have been in before. And so you'll see people like the Clintons or various politicians, the Carries, who, you know, two or three of their family members made it in. And, and just knowing from one Diaco family, it's impossible to get one in, let alone three in at the same time. Now, if you get in there and you graduate from Harvard Law or Yale Law, like Anna's saying, there's absolutely a certain amount of panache that's associated with that. Then how many of the Supreme Court justices went to, I think almost everyone except for Coney Barrett, uh, Amy Coney Barrett, went to either Yale or Harvard Law School? Yeah, there was a uh, there was a, a nominee that Bush put up that got destroyed as a female because she went to job or law school. So the the difference though is it's a couple things. Number one, it's it's harder to get into those schools unless you have some kind of connection, and then it's For a sure. joke. But but the the reason that those schools are a little harder than the other schools are because most classes are graded on a curve, and so if you're in a curve and you're at TCC. It's going to be an easier group that you're going in the curve against. Whereas if you're graded on a curve against yeah, other kids at Harvard, right. you're going against not just a lot of jobbers. I mean, some of those kids are freaking brilliant. So you're so, so you're, there are some jobbers in there. Do so that jobbers. Eight, so Look. you're 86 at TCC that would have put you in the upper, you know, one tenth percent. Right. Uh, you're 86 at Harvard put you in the bottom 10 percent. Right. right. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's and a different you reminded curve. me something about when you went to Duke. You told me that, you know, when he was at Northeast High School, he was the only valed- valedictorian. When he went to Duke, everyone was a valedictorian. Right. Everybody was there. And so they're all smart. Dan, it's- when's the first person you encountered at Duke that you realized that he, not listen, because you may never really publicly I met a person is smarter than you, but I'm sure that there's times oh, I bet people that, when, smarter than that when you're talking to a person, you might think in your head, this person might be smarter than me. Just you know when you're when you're talking to somebody yes, you know yes, yes. like when you talk to Lummy you automatically know you're smarter than him right Lummy I yes, mean right of Dan course. right Dan oh, yeah. but you, when you talk to most people Dan you automatically the most of the people in your life that you encounter you're automatically smarter than them so you don't even have to worry about it but when what was what was the first person at Duke that you ever encountered that you thought as a student not a professor or anything like that but as a student that you're like Wow, this person's pretty damn smart. Maybe even smarter than me. Yeah, I met this girl that was so smart. Was, she was she was hot, athletic, and she was brilliant. She it was like four languages, engineering. She just she was just brilliant. Did she you, was just brilliant. What did, happened to her? Did you? Huh? Did you? Briefly. <laughs> Wow, can you imagine how smart those kids would have been? I know. Oh I my know, god. I know. Hedge fund kings. I know. Oh my god. So is the other thing this too, like the professors at Harvard Harvard are probably well more tenured, uh, have real life scenarios, mm. former big partners. Or or, or in compared to the you know guy teaching at Stetson, or are does does that matter in determining how prestigious a law school? The, the professors are all they're all they're all good. Yes, they're all well trained. It's kind of it's kind of like uh, it's it's kind of like a family. Once you get into an Ivy League school, that's kind of a family amongst the Ivy Leagues. They 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 tend to accept other Ivy Leagues. Incestuous. They tend to employ other Ivy League people. So most of the 
professors at Harvard or Yale went to Harvard or Yale or Cornell or Columbia, Princeton. they tend to be real snobby in that sense. And so they just surround themselves with more people that think the same. And then you have next this self propagating Next thing you got a big snob deal. Yeah, next, exactly. thing you have, next thing you know, you got the show suits right. that mm-hmm. only hires you know people from Harvard, except mm-hmm. for Mike Ross, who's a fake. But yeah. interestingly, though, when they went to like trial teams and stuff like that, the guys at Stetson loved the guys from Harvard. Because the like, guys from Harvard say. thought they were so smart, and the guys from Stetson just would rip them new a-holes. So the difference in the curriculum between Stetson and Harvard is Stetson is the number one trial and appellate advocacy school in the nation by U.S. News and World Reports, which I show Nicholas all the time. And that means that of all the law schools in the nation, they have been voted number one in trial and appellate advocacy. That means trial and appellate work. And so that's what I did when I was there. And when I graduated in 1995, it was recognized as number one in in uh, in trial and appellate so advocacy. For 30 it is again years, right now. 30 years, it's been number one or number two in trial ad. So, so we go to these trial competitions, these national trial competitions, and I'd literally see other schools point us out and be like, oh my God, there's Stetson. And so it was different. I'd never been a part of something that was universally recognized as the best. Other than your family reunions. <laughs> I'm, there, just third, when, when I'm just third chair it. there. Your third chair there? Yeah. <laughs> All right, the so, table. so Jay actually walked in with these glasses that you can buy at like Walgreens or 7-Eleven or Walmart. Are they, are they a dollar? They're a dollar. They're a at dollar. The, at the, the, uh, and so they're, 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 these are the glasses that they're recommending. Let, if you're going to step like outside them. today at three, whatever the hell it is, no matter where you live, these are the glasses they recommend that you look up into the sky and that you can look up. You can look directly at the eclipse and not have any worrying about being, you know, Damage, damaging. And they're only Those dollar? glasses are so dark, Bubba, that I put it right up Look to this little ones. fluorescent light here that we have on our st- or that we sh- for us, not the ring lights, but the other ones. I, 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 right I, up, you can't see anything. I, I, can't see anything. Look at that. I, I already put them on. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I already put them on, so I'm like, can't see nothing. you're not, you're not even going to be able to see the eclipse with that. No. Just black paper. That's yeah. what it looks like, right? Like, I mean, you know, and think about the people that make them. They had to really, really make them probably double dark to be able to cover their ass. Those Chinese uh, factory workers, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they just, they just punch those things out one million every minute. If you're a girl, I wouldn't wear these in public today. You could easily get kidnapped, sex trafficked. I mean, anything could happen if you're wearing these glasses. You can't see anything. Wear them tonight at the club, and you'll be the hottest bitch in the club. I'm going to tell you that right now, right? Monday night at the club, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Lummy National Championship tonight. Yes. uh, Purdue and um, And UConn. And UConn. Uh, Is UConn a heavy favorite? Uh, Last time I looked, I believe it was uh, five and a half. Five and a half. Where are you laying your money, Lummy? Purdue. You're laying your money on Purdue? Yeah, I'm taking the points. I think it's going to be a closer game. I think it will be back and forth. I think I mean, I mean, think it's going to be a really good game. I didn't know UConn had a, another big man just like uh, uh, Zach Eady. Yeah. I watched the uh, the women's championship I yesterday with Caitlin Clark. Clark and, yeah, it uh, wasn't as good as the semifinal game. And, and she, listen, Caitlin Clark, she completely choked. She did. In the third quarter. Mm-hmm. And she was just laying up bombs to lay them up. And they just, they Iowa could in. not account for South Carolina's height. Nope. They their just defense could... was unreal. The um, their, their defensive player with the red hair that was right. under the was in the paint the whole time, she was unbelievable. She's like 6'8". She's a beast. Six, She's eight? absolutely, yeah. I mean, in a good way. She was an unbelievable, six, she eight. controlled the paint. They were undefeated. Did, they had did, a perfect did, season. Did you see the the other big girl who was blonde and yes, yes. And, and, almost a model? Yes, like yes. not all big girls are usually Chloe that sexy. Kitts? She didn't have weird Kitts. facial features. Kitts. She, you know, she had her makeup did just perfect, mm-hmm. man. And I was like, man, for being, I think, she, and I think she's they're six five, six two, six two. Not, and, oh, is she six two? The Chloe, thought, Chloe Kitts. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Kitts. I'll send you her. With, like white stuff. hair pulled back, the yeah. ponytail. Yes. She's oh, kind yeah. of pretty. Said Bubba Cameron Brink. Then, if we're getting into women basketball players. Who? Cameron Brink. I sent you uh, the white bitches. Uh, this is uh, the North Carolina right? right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's only six. South Carolina. So. She's only 6'2"? I think that's what it said on the internet. Yeah, Jay, she is pretty. Oh, what's that's not her. Oh, I know, it's not her. That's not her. That's well, that, I think that's the starting team right there. Yeah. Right, that's her. Yeah. But you're right, right, Bub. In the third corner, she had a chance where they were down, I think, 12 points, and they came back to a six, and then she kept bricking it. I mean, she it just, was and, unbelievable. And, and, and she was going, like, she was just oh. going way, 
way too far on the three-point land. Yeah, yeah like from half If court. she'd made some of those shots, they could have tied it or even taken a little bit of the lead in the third quarter, but that was the difference, and then they just started pulling away, and it was I over. sent you the chick from Stanford, uh, Cameron Brink, that Seth said. I'm a fan. She's going She's going to the pros. Yeah? Well, I think uh, the, the, big, the big three that are going to the pros are, you know, obviously Caitlin, and then... Um, Angel Reese. Angel Reese from LSU, and then... Um, the entire South Carolina team. The entire. <laughs> they South, were unbelievable. The entire South Carolina team. Okay, here let me use some. Who's this, who's this now? This is Cameron Brink. She's another great one. Oh yeah. She's very tall. How tall is she? She's I, prettier. She's, what, like six three something. I think she's prettier, Seth. I oh, do she's too. Tall. Where's she from? Yeah. Stanford. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. She's smart too. Hell yeah. Whoa! Look at those. She legs. looks a little taller than six two, huh? She's six four. Six four. Six four. That's, That's tall. awfully tall. All right. So here's the path. Of the total eclipse, I'll be calling Sumo up. I'm going to be live on the air, right here. The best, if I if I can get it all figured out, and Sumo, which lives in Columbus, Indiana, which is right here, and nice. you can see how close that is to the middle, we'll be out out in his driveway. <clears throat> you know, show, we'll be broadcasting the total eclipse. Uh, uh, hopefully, live on the air today. So keep it, you know. Yeah, we're still going to get a decent amount. Here, you think? They said so. Everywhere in the nation is going to get some. Uh, but we will see a partial solar eclipse. Um, and it's... This is 970 WFLA. And, like, this is their YouTube channel or their Facebook channel. And this chick's kind of got a little fry to her. Listen. Darts. I believe we're going to get full graphics here. Yes. So that we can uh, put the time frame. Channel 8 Smart Man. They got a whole nother show going on internet-wise. Mm-hmm. Nobody else, I don't think 13, 28, I don't think anybody else does, but Channel 8 has a whole nother channel of just, of just, of just, you know, not on network or broadcast. Just or, internet? Yeah. I think they've got probably like a, a lot of you are watching. Of it. What's that? I think they got a variation of it. There's like Fox Now. Um, oh, and I okay. Think there's, I think there's versions of it you can watch through their apps and on the website and stuff. All right. So locally, probably you're saying a lot of stations might be doing this. Yeah, but I think most of it's like repackaging of what they, segments already run right, on right. cable. I'm from Tampa. It starts at 143, the partial eclipse. So that means that is the exact time when the very edge of the moon starts to block. Is that all we're getting? <clears throat> block out the sun. So that means if you look. The sun. Up at 143. From the map You're probably not going to notice a whole lot. <laughs> right but if you look up at 2 o'clock, right? Uh, uh, must use glasses. Will not see totality. Glasses needed the entire time. You'll mm-hmm. start to see. You know they're just saying that's all their legal counsel that has stepped in. <laughs> you know that's their Jay Diaco that I stepped in that. and said, we're going to make sure we have disclaimers all over the screen. The Basically the bite taken out of the sun. And maximum eclipse for Tampa is at 3 o'clock. Look at that. So my suggestion to you is set an alarm on your phone right now for Monday at 3 p.m. Because that's when you'll want to look up. That's when we'll, you'll want to use your glasses and yes. look up. And you will see about 65% of the sun blocked out by the moon. And just know that that black... Everybody in every state in in, in all of America, today might be the one day that you get more Americans to actually go outside for a brief moment during times that they normally would be inside, right? I don't. Th- well, moment of unity. America's got to work at three o'clock. I yeah, mean, but I think I letting, think I think everybody's going to have like a like a little fifteen minute smoke break kind of deal. I'm letting my people out. <clears throat> yeah. I, I mean, don't know what person's not doing that. I don't Everyone know if, in my office can I don't walk know outside the, and check it out. I don't know if the Ford, you know, truck manufacturing production line stops <laughs> and, and Green and Greenville I bet you does. And, and yeah, you know, I don't know that Chevy Publix ain't stopping. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Nope. I don't think the cashier at Publix is locking her drawer up to go outside. There probably is a percentage of people that cannot go. But for those people that work like at Jay's place or you know here or at a normal, you know. Uh, I mean, Dan, Dan, I'm assuming you're going to let all your employees go out, are you not? Uh, if they would, if I even said not Dark to, they'd still go outside. Dark spot that you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? They don't listen to me. They, 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 they do what Jennifer <laughs> says, right? Exactly. Yeah. I'm nobody. Yeah. Is the moon. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. No. 
I'm just going to go back to this graphic really quickly at the top because but this is just, channel. This is channel oh. eight. Yeah, this is how we all. Oh, that in between the second one, um, in and in the, in the third one, good. in that's sixty big, percent I mean, of the marketing of the that's sky, you know, the animals are going to act D normal. Most. A animals are going to act. No, I mean, the, and, and so now if you go on here, <clears throat> different schools have different things that they're going to do. Hillsborough County. Hillsborough County schools will be released an hour early on Monday. The, the, the district said many elementary and high school students will already be dismissed by the height of the eclipse. But schools are advised to keep students inside during the eclipse unless they're doing a supervised class activity with the correct eyeglasses. So Do you Hillsborough's letting you out. They're letting you out early. What does I mean, what is that? Get what? off school property. Yeah. Don't burn your eyes on. Do you remember what they told us to do? Bring a cereal box, and then they poke a hole in it, yeah. and we'd look through the hole of the cereal box because yeah. there were no glasses at Seven Eleven. Uh, Citrus County School Districts uh, said, due to safety concerns, all acti uh, outdoor activities, including recess, recess, PE, and athletic practices, on Monday between the times of one thirty and four, will be uh, moved indoors. Manatee County says school dist district for elementary, middle, and K through eight schools. All outdoor activities between the hours of 1.30 and 4.15 are moved indoors. This applies to PE, recess, athletic practices, band practices, and after school programs. Because they don't trust little kids not to look up. Polk County, same. I mean, st students will be allowed to experience. This is Pinellas. Students will be allowed to experience the eclipse and uh, as a school activity with the, with the teacher present and the correct glasses. Does Parents, the hole in the cardboard work, Dan, still? Yeah, if you look at it. Yeah, you got to do oh, it. Oh, yeah, but you have to look. You have to put the hole in the cardboard and then look, look at the ground with it. You with can't look at it directly. Aluminum foil, What, what too. really works, though, and this is something that I learned. Somebody's going to fry his eyes out because he's just going to put straight aluminum foil on there. Yeah. <laughs> cut, cut, cut holes in it, and it's just going to actually attract the sun and burn his retina. <laughs> Dan, be prepared for burn retina call I'll later be ready today. for it. Yep, I'll be ready. Um, I took a pair of a thing, a tin piece of tin foil, Dan, and I uh I scotch taped it onto my eyes, and then I uh put a little uh, holes in them, and it seemed like the sun was making my eyes hotter, Dan. Yeah, well, stop looking at the sun, mom. I mean, but can you believe? I mean, can you believe some schools were let their kids out an hour? Know. What a bunch of pussies! Know, but it's funny you didn't see anything on TikTok about it. There's a way for people that can't afford the glasses to do it with a cereal box. And what was it, Danny? Again, there's a hole, and then you look through within the cereal box. How did, you how did look, that work? You let the sun project through the hole, and you look at the image on the ground. They've talked about that's a pinball that, camera. Man, you are really poor if you're doing it that way. Yeah, well, it's so the only way we could do it as kids. Nah. Isn't the cereal box more expensive than the glasses? I thought they were yes. a dollar. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Spend $4 on cereal to just get the cereal <laughs> box. When I come back, uh, we're going to get into, uh, Seth, this is The Rock had one of the most amazing entrances last night in WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. This is from his entrance, I believe, on Saturday night. On Saturday night. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead. We'll do that next. If time. you want 24-7 on-demand Bubba and the crew, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. That'd be great. In the fridge. Yeah, in the fridge, please. Thank you. Good packaging, Berto. Do you remember when uh, Sasha, did Sasha Banks? Yeah. Remember when she came to uh, Apple a day? Oh, yeah. Was she Micah's date? Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. I just had like a vision like the whole time that I would like somehow like get to talk to her, or get a picture with her or something, and she, she, there just wasn't that moment. I'm sorry. Did you ever see her again? No, uh-uh. Oh. Is she a big star? Sasha Banks, yeah, she was a big star uh, in WWE. She left did she Japan. Did? Oh. Yeah, and now she's with AEW. She's really pretty. Yeah. Mercedes. I, can, I concur. Mercedes versus... Beast. 
They're five dollars? I thought they were a dollar. Because I was going to go pick some up at fucking 7-Eleven. What's up, Maria? I'll see you next Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah. See you next Friday for Bill's birthday. Are you excited for your birthday? No. Is Sarah going to eat a longhorn? They're all gone at 7 Eleven. You just went. Where did you get your glasses? Um, 7 Eleven on. Hmm. Uh, Dale Mabry, right near the Lowe's, um, South Lowe's, is over by, I guess it's uh, Euclid? Euclid and Dale hmm. Mabry. They had a stack of them. So, dark match. I couldn't believe how dark they were. Yeah. You gotta be careful with the pins, huh? No doubt. So I was on at 7-Eleven, Maria, Guatemala. I checked two. The third, excuse me, the second one's where I found them. They had none at Lowe's, they had them at 7-Eleven. So I think if you just get a random 7-Eleven, you'll see them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Outside city limits. Beyond the expected. The standard road yeah. The off-road ready Mazda CX-50. We're looking for outsiders. I didn't watch. I saw you tweeted it, Bubba, but I didn't watch Tucker Carlson opening up for Kid Rock. Yeah. You won't be at 199. Did you know Maria Guatemala is not going to be here for 199? How do you know that? What up, Grouper Lips? You're better, buddy. Why? Why? The Rock beat Cody Rhodes? That was a tag match the of the first night. The Rock is still wrestling? Um, and it was... This is a good excuse, Maria. It was... If they won, then it was the bloodline rules. If there were no rules. Okay, I'll let you go ahead. Okay. Yep. It's going to be an extra one this year. Costica, what's going on, man? It's long, man. El Nino is when they're coming out. Thank you, Spencer Squared. I appreciate it, man. So, speak, uh, I got your cards right here, man. You gotta do that absolute break this week. What, 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 what exactly is that? 18, uh, wind patterns? Yeah. Missed you also. There's only two? El Nino? What up, Chris? Caviar? Why is it spam? I mean, did we have Cody Rhodes in a few times? Yeah, we have some uh, we have some stuff on the YouTube. We got stuff on YouTube. Yeah, find me it. You kind of focus more on it. I think it's tag me there, but I mean, do we have do we have a short? Oh, you're yeah. the man, Berto. Thank it. you. I'll send you. I'm gonna send you a message later. Okay. Okay, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Redneck? I thought Gunther was a dumb name, but Walter, Walter, I'm glad they changed it from Walter. Gunther! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
It's the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Miss part of the show? We got you covered at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to Bubba Live Worldwide. We often think about um, becoming more heart healthy. And if to live that life means to make some huge unsustainable changes, well, Super B Heart Chews can get you your daily blood pressure support and just two daily chews. And they even promote the heart healthy energy without the stimulants. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants in Super Beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. Super B Heart Chews are the number one dark doctor, pharmacist, and cardiologist recommended beat brand for cardiovascular health support. You can double your potential with Super B Heart Chews and get a free month supply of Super B Heart Chews, and that's on all bundles. And you can also get a free full-size bag of turmeric. That stuff's really, really good for you as well. That's a $25 value by your order. And it all starts and stops by going to BubbaLovesBeats.com. Get this exclusive offer only at BubbaLovesBeats.com. So Seth is probably the only one uh, here that really is into uh, WWE. Are you not, now, Seth, are you into AEW? I mean, that's why. Rhett's into it. Oh, you're into it too, Rhett. I'm sorry. I sent you the Cody yeah. Rose uh, short. Okay. Now, where did where did he come out of? Like Cody Rhodes to me, and and nobody get mad at me, but you know Cody Rhodes to me, like you know, was just always a really, 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 really good worker <clears throat> that always kind of got screwed. And his dad was you know one of the all time greats, and his brother got a big push, but really never the push that, that any none of them ever really got the push that their legacy would warrant they should get well cody was one of the guys that started aew and that's what kind of helped push himself up into that main event picture because he left wwe he was getting jobbed out he had stupid gimmicks right so i'm kind of right on that right with regards that's what i always kind of always thought that wwe kind of gimmicked him out like just didn't use him correctly right and so he went to aew he started aew he's one of the people that started the company so hold on the guy one of the guys that started the AEW now holds the strap with WWF, WWE. Yes, <laughs> that's pro wrestling. <laughs> yeah, one of the. Uh... <laughs> did he did did he did he make a pretty good money selling out of uh, AEW? I assume so. I would hope so. I think the WWE probably paid him quite a bit to leave uh, the uh, the AEW. Now is the AEW even comparable in any way, shape, or form with the WWE? Uh, sometimes Seth. if they, they, they have the ability to sell out a stadium, like they did a, a show, it was all in, I think it was in London last year. It was like 80, 90,000 people. And who's, um, and who's there Roman Reigns or who's there MJF? Who's that? Probably MJF. But I mean, he's been away from the company and he's in limbo right now. I don't know if it's a shooter or work or one of those M- things, MJF? but they, it'll come out in the wash. MJF, Maxwell, Jacob Friedman. <laughs> Is he... Like super badass looking or anything like that. Uh, you know, yeah. For somebody being as close to the wrestling world as I used to be, I don't know nothing about it nowadays. Zero. MJF's a superstar. I think he's only like twenty six or twenty seven. So now, yeah. now is MJ available to be hired by WWE or is he still under contract with AEW? Uh, I don't know the official situation, but like I think they took him off of his off of their website for a while. They stopped selling his merchandise. So. He kind of wants you to think that there's a possibility he could go to WWE. There's always a lot of rumors around this time of year, too, with WrestleMania. Is Jer- but I think it's just a storyline, and that's that's kind of who he is. He's a really, really good worker. I mean, you, you label guys as good workers all the time, but MJF, like, he, he he's great for the business. Where'd he come from? He's awesome. Uh, from the Indies, mostly. MJF. Mac, yeah, Maxwell well, Jacob Freeman. I mean, can you send me some footage of MJF? Yeah, just send some promos. You might have to dump if they're not is, censored, now, though. Is Jericho still a thing? Yeah, he's an AEW. Is it, well, wasn't he one of the original guys, too? I, th- I think I, th- I think Jericho, when they when AEW formed... Yeah, Jericho formed, was over there, when it, I think, when it started. I did, did, is, am I wrong to assume that I thought he got, so, I thought he got some ownership? Maybe to make you know, because he was one of the really big names. Yeah, he was he was the first champion they had. 
Is he still with with the with them or yeah. no? Yeah, he's doing the Lionheart gimmick. He brought that back. He's coming out to White Zombie every week, which is awesome. <laughs> And really? Stink just had Stink just had his last match in AEW, so that yeah, was cool. That was, that was really cool too. So, but so Sting retired. With, yeah, Sting retired. He had his last match. It was a big tag team match with Darby. You, think I, you think I should call him to see if I, they want to give me one last match? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, Seth, what, they're, that's like, what they're doing. Can, AEW's got a reputation of hiring all the old guys now. Yeah, you gotta, hey, you want to hire a guy that had the most heat ever? <laughs> hire me and Awesome Kong to do a program. There you go. With all this, you know, trans and mans and girls and boys and women fighting men and all that kind of stuff. Where do you fit into that picture, Bubba? I, I'm a man and she's a woman. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, she, look at look at this. They're actually saying, take a coffee, like like what you would do your spaghetti noodles a with. A strainer. A colander or a strainer. And look at, come on, man. And look at the solar deal through that. That's dumb as hell. Just put it on top of your head and go inside. Yeah. Call yourself an idiot. Just watch me on Rumble. I'll show it to you live from Columbus, Indiana. So, um, let me. Did you send me in the RJF deal? I'm trying to get some uh, uncensored stuff. All right. So, is this from is this from our uh, our YouTube short deal? Yes. When we had Cody Rhodes in. Yep. Callaway runs the, the show, does he not? What's that? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Callaway runs the show, does he not? In the in, in the locker room, Mark is the guy. Yes, is he, not? he is. He's the man. If we had to go to wrestler's court, he is the judge <laughs> and the jury. Is there ever such a thing, uh, Goldie? Is there ever such a when you guys you got two guys that are being you know not cool with each other? Do you do you, do you throw it over to Mark? Yeah, he'll he'll pull you aside and he'll give you a talking to and straighten you up. He is a definite locker room leader. Cody, you ever had had that talk before? Oh no, no, I've never. The only time I ever got to. So I think at this point, he let me, sounds we, young, man. Well, we got but we got Cody Rhodes and Gold Dust, don't we? Yeah, you were focusing more on Gold Dust, obviously, because Cody Rhodes was really young at that point. Right, but we, I mean, this Cra- is that Crazy is, Undertaker. Wait, spoiler. Undertaker, a Godfather speech was about being late, and he struck the fear of God in me. So I was how I was, late were you, bud? Uh, I was about two minutes late. But he was there already, <laughs> and you should there be there by the monitor, and that's where you should be watching every match on the card. And and how did it go down, if I could ask? Oh, it honestly, he didn't do it in the way you'd think. As far as some guys who can, they assume that they're in a leadership role, make a big scene, make an ass out of you. Talking about the Undertaker, you know. But Undertaker, no, to the side, talks to you like a man. And that's why everyone respects him in the way they do. He's the guy to go to whenever you have any issue. Wow. Callaway runs the show. That was a that was Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes. Lummy. Yes, you might was. want to repurpose that. Did it do very good? Yes, it did. Six hundred seven thousand views. Well, I mean, especially oh, six hundred thousand views. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty good, Bubba. Especially because um, you know, turn turn everything down if you haven't watched WrestleMania yet. But uh, Undertaker showed up last night. I heard. I mean, it was crazy. Here's the Rock's entrance. Is this is this Saturday night or, or last? This is Saturday. This is just like I mean, if you were at a concert and like you know whoever you're watching perform comes out to this, like I don't know, just it got me all fired. No, but up. if you know if you're at a concert and there's twenty different people, there's twenty different rock bands that could be coming out. I don't think anybody necessarily knew that this was going to be the Rock, right? No. Until they until they until they hit his. Rockness. This was like, who the hell's? Oh well, I mean, they knew the Rock was in the match. I know that, but they didn't know that the Rock was going to come out to this. I think, am I right in the fact that when this hit, nobody did? Did everybody know the Rock was coming, or um, they were just like, okay, it could be one of a couple different people? I think they knew the Rock was coming, but this, the Rock hasn't wrestled since he's been back, and I mean, he's come out to this music. They've kind of tweaked his his intro, but this looked like a polished intro, and I mean, the guy looked at fifty one. The guy looked like just an absolute star coming out. And just imagine this: this looks good on TV, but just imagine this in an arena. You know, on, well, they they played it out at where the where the uh, Eagles play, correct? Yes. So in in a like a a football stadium, and it's this well produced, like seventy thousand people each night, I believe. And I mean, the production value of the WWE is, quite frankly, I know this term's used a lot, second to none. Wrestling's like, back, there's Bubba. No, but there's nobody that can do a better visual show. Or production for fights or wrestling matches or anything like that better than the WWE. They are the best. Actually, Seth, um, one of the guys, if you remember, it was like maybe 10 years ago. 
and the Lightning used to have a pretty good graphics guy, and it was okay, and the in-game experience was okay. But then if you remember, one year it just switched, and everything got slicker, and everything got more fluid, and everything got more fast-paced, and it was a better in-game experience. I don't know if you knew, but I had a guy that worked kind of high up there, and he's like, we... And a lot of people don't know this, but they hired a guy that was a WWE guy, a WWE like, you know, like in production, right? Like produces this stuff. And that's what's kind of changed the W the, the Tampa Bay lightnings in game experiences. They, they went over to Orlando and, and hired a guy that was like third in charge of NXT, you know, production and let him come in and do all that. That I don't know if you did. You know, did you no, know that? No, I know that their their director is John Franzone, who's in like the director Hall of Fame for right. in game presentation. So uh, yeah, probably when they started ushering in the lightning, used to just have like the worst in game presentation the worst. to the best. They'd be like they flash a guy up, and that would be nothing. But I think a lot of it had to do with Jeff Vinnick putting the money into the team yeah. finally, and, and them having a budget to do that. Right, and that cost millions of dollars. To be able to pull millions and millions of dollars to be able to pull off something like this. Absolutely. We're watching uh, what ends up being The Rock's entrance into uh, into uh, WrestleMania. Uh, Do you care at all or are you just you're so tapped out on wrestling? No, I... I I do. I want to see how well it's produced. I watched it this morning, and I think it's worthy of us talking about. And I think right now wrestling has as pop culturally cool matches as they've ever had. Well, like I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, Cody Rhodes, who you obviously know is is the son of Dusty Rhodes, feuding with Roman Reigns, who's been the champion for three or four years. And when and bringing back Undertaker and then The Rock being part of all of it, that's about as pop culturally sound as you can get. There's no names in there that aren't Hall of Fame or the greatest of all time. Well, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say it's oh, multi generational too. Right. I mean, it's it's Seth's generation down to his kids' generation, right. and everyone's learning to enjoy it again. And it's escapism. Right now, there's too much heavy crap on TV. You watch this. This is great. Right. Because for an hour or two, you're gone. You can watch someone get paralyzed experience. in real time. Yeah, you're you're immersed in the experience. And they had a Lil Wayne was there, Snoop Dogg. They did a bit with Jason Kelsey. I show speed. They should have had Taylor Swift with Travis front row. Man, how cool would wrestling be if they got Taylor Swift involved in a high spot? Oh, would that be the, the best rope? ever, Seth? <laughs> if they got Taylor Swift to come in there like they do some of the celebrity matches and she kicks somebody's ass? Bubba, would I that don't... not be the... Bur- I mean, it might, it sure might just be the t- it. tipping point. No, it'd be the tipping point. I just don't think there's enough money on the planet to get her to ever do something. <laughs> True. <like that>. <laughs> True. <laughs> Like, you just say, like, hey, Taylor, you can live forever if you do this WWE thing. I think you pass. Final boss. Engage. Now, now, right here, you know who it is. I mean, this is almost as good as the... Did you see me retweet, Seth, yeah, the, the Cubs? Cubs? Yeah, that was, yeah. That was really good. <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> this is almost as good as the Cubs <laughs> opening day. Let me send it yeah, to me. Really you should, a that. man. I mean, this is this is one of the longest tenured, most prestigious franchises in all of Major League Baseball. One of, I mean, there's, there's, it's one of the, you know, the, the, the five most coveted franchises in professional baseball opening day. And you should see how they introduce their players. It's, it was, it was like uh, sparklers. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I mean, if we had a softball team, we could come up with, I wonder if Hogan gets sad because, you know, the business is, I mean, because the business has passed him by. I sent you like, the Cubs. He's a little long in the tooth. Well, he was there. I, 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 wasn't well, he? But, well, I don't. I don't. I didn't see any mentions of or any. Seth, you watched the entire. I, did, I deal. didn't see. I didn't see Hogan at all. I mean, so you see, like this used to be you. This used to be you, and now you're not even mentioned. Well, when he was fifty something, he could still come back and do this I, stuff. I, I under, yeah, I think he wrestled The Rock when he was fifty something. Right. He's just. He's. I mean, was he seventy? 
65, know, but, when, 60. but when you're the goat and you're the one that this was all built upon, you, you would think they would still throw you a little bit of a bone. Oh, he, I guess he just had to, he was able to sign autographs in the convention center. Oh, he was? Yeah, I mean, this walker can only go so far. It's a king. I mean, the intro's Bubba. I mean, that's, ha- that's half the show right now. Yeah, I sent you the Cubs uh, one, but it's way better. Yeah. As far as a guy who's made his money with his body, he's kept his body a temple, and he's done one hell of a job, like Seth said. This guy looks amazing at 51. They, did, they said he was training for 12 weeks, that he was flying wrestlers in and out to help him, and I mean, he he looked awesome and did a great job, so, and now I think he's off to film a movie. <laughs> of course he All is. All right, hold on here. I'm, okay, hold on. So, here's here's The Rock, the fi- <laughs> final moments of The Rock's uh, intro. Standing in a bull fire ring. He's just, he's just got the it. Let me. This would be a good time for us to bring. I know we had the rock. Do we we got the rock on any shorts? Mm, No. I know the rock has called a few times. I've done a few rock interviews. Let's see if we can you know, cut up a couple rock. If we could find some, get a hold of Cantrell or I think somebody. We got a few. I think. Yeah, I know we did one. We did a couple of videos for the Warren Sap rock call. All right. Maybe see if we can you know whittle out something. Uh, All right. Uh, Short wise. So from the absolute best production that money could buy, and 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 and, and Seth, one would argue that franchise wise, the Cubs could be actually worth more than the WWE. <sighs> I mean, you know, well, I mean, you, you they're they're both up there in value. Yes, I think because the WWE is now merged with UFC and it's TKO, I feel like that might have more overall value. But if but, you were just to splinter off what the WWE is worth, I mean, the Cubs are arguably yes. worth probably 5 billion dollars. 4. Point, it's like 4.2, I think it All is. All right, so yeah. 4.2 billion dollars. You know, that's the that's the franchise's value. And and the and the WWE very well maybe I don't know if anybody has done a a, a a value evaluation on them I know they've they've since you know joined with uh, you know the UFC making them a mega corporation that would be probably worth more than the Cubs but if you were just to take the value of said WWE it may not be worth five million five billion let me ask Alexa hey Alexa how much is the WWE worth. I'm having trouble hearing. Can you say that again? No, but I can ask Lummy Bing. It looks like uh, the WWE is currently valued at nine point three billion, and oh. the UFC is twelve point one billion. Oh, oh. All right. Well, then let's say the Cubs should have half as good as a presentation as what WWE had. Okay, let's yeah. say that. Right? Yeah. Here's the Cubs, arguably one of the most loved. And, and and famous Major League Baseball teams, and this is their opening day for opening day, and as they intro their starters, this is their pyrotechnics slash, you know, production of said introduction. <laughs> Honest to God, ready? Need more pirates Are you bark, kidding me? Oh, oh, ready? Oh, two little boxes. Yeah. Hold on. Boxes. Hold on. Here we go. That was the first guy. Here's the second guy. Why are they still trying? Only two of the four are working. Yeah. Only two of the four work. He twenty-five hundred cash up. Wow, that's sad. The oh. rock. <clears throat> the rock has said. That he's not endorsing Joe Biden. He enjo- he endorsed Joe Biden last time. He's not this time. You made that endorsement in 2020. Are you happy with the state of America? Am I happy with the state of America right now? Well, that answer is no. Do I believe we're going to get better? I-, I believe in that. I'm an optimistic guy, and I, I believe we can get better. Um, the endorsement that I made... Uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. And I thought back then when we talk about, hey, uh, you know, I, I'm in this position uh, where I have some influence and it's my job then. I felt like that then. It's my job now to now, hold on. 
now I don't know where this is going, but I promise you that he's going to say, I think I need to sit this one out and not give you my opinion. I was in a position last time as an influencer that I felt as if I needed to make my endorsement known. I think he's <clears throat> I think he's going to baby face here. Think or I mean, right. I, no, I'm taking it back. I think he's going to, let me, let me, in the industry, it's called Shakespeare off. Yeah. He's going to Shakespeare off this deal and not commit. Well, he's he's real good at doing that. He's been yeah, non-committal for like 10 years. I know. <laughs> Ever I since he back then. went to Hollywood. But he's doing it in a <laughs> way where he's, about- he's not... He's doing it very politically savvy. Oh, yeah, he's smart. He's very, he, very I mean, smart he guy. He he's a very work. smart guy. That's how to work. About, hey, uh, you know, I, I'm in this position uh, where I have some influence. Talking about last time. And it's my job then. I felt like that then. It's my job now to exercise my influence. And When you're more narcissistic, now that you've calmed down a little bit, seen a little more in life. Because you realize he's <clears> wrong about a lot of and stuff. Your, exactly. and, your, and your handlers would say, rock. It's just better not to get involved in this stuff S-T-F-U. because because it's no it's a no win situation. You've instantaneously polarized your audience fifty percent. So rock mm-hmm. Shakespeare off, kid. Just be like, hey, I'm not. You know, I, I, my name's Bennett, and I ain't in it. <clears throat> Share with this. This is who I'm going to endorse. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer's no. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And that answer is no. Well, that's because he's got Moana 2 coming out. I mean, he's with WWE. Yeah, he just, he's uh, got, just, got his, too he, smart. He, he's got his own football network. And there's no reason to deal with that. Nope. Uh, here are all the celebrities that were at uh, ringside at WWE. I don't know who Winnie Harlow is. Oh, she's that model with vitiligo. You, you can see, see the, it on her wh- face. Oh, okay. She got I thought she, in, thought she was in character. Uh, no. <laughs> George Kittle. I don't know who that is. Uh, he's a tight end for the Eagles. Uh, 49ers. Oh. oh, used to be for the Eagles, though, right? No. No, no. always 49ers. Oh, always 49ers. 49ers. Super, Super Bowl. Now, here, now, now, this is The Rock from Saturday Night Lummy. Oh, look and <clears throat> and I, don't, I can't quite. So he wrestled Saturday. He, he beat Cody clean one, two, three, Saturday night. Yeah, it was a tag match. But Cody ended up coming back. And winning it all, and is the current champion beating Roman Reigns. This yes. was Saturday night's tag team. Well, different than his old school. Oh yeah, of course. I don't know, he still looks good as hell to me. This guy's living yeah. it when you're taking five thousand milligrams looks... of testosterone a week. I mean, he look. He still looks great. Amazing. Uh, let me do words. I got to come back with this story before we end. It's kind of disturbing. Utah parents accused of raping daughter. Uh, age 15, to teach her, claiming it was safer than to have sex with students. So let me rape Strangers. You. I'm sorry, yeah, sex with strangers. Let me rape you so that sex is less traumatic once you finally have it. <laughs> wow. I hope they I, I hope they spend a lot of prison time. Those, those little Utah parents. Ugh. What's fully what what's in what's Utah known for? Is that where Mormons? the Mormons? The Mormons. Oh, the Mormons. Polygamy, right? Yeah. yeah the Polygamy. Secret underwear or whatever yeah. it is. Uh, that explains it. If you want to deep dive into the Bubba the Love Sponge show from the past, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show. We'll be back after these words. Oh. I gotta go piss. You gotta go. Let it out, baby. Look it out. Oh, 
Thanks, Nick. I appreciate it, man. I'm putting the fucking rock over Hulk Hogan, man. Fuck that shit. Hmm. Who's your favorite wrestler of all time? Matt Riddle. For real? Um, I don't... I, I mean... For someone you grew up liking? I'd probably say, like, The Rock and Stone Cold. I was kind of, like, 14, 15. Mm-hmm. Like, Hulk Hogan was, like, cool when I was a kid, but, I mean... Whatever. Right. Did your dad watch any sports or wrestling or anything like that? Mine? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he watched wrestling. Yeah, well, yeah. See, because I think that's the secret sauce, is, like, your dad has to be into that shit. And yeah. then you are nostalgic about it, and then you grow up liking it. I mean, I took off for a long time. Like, it's not, it's, you know, it's not something I watch, you know, it's on a couple times a week. It's not something I watch. Oh, but I mean, like, sports in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, the Damian Priest stuff was fucking great, man. I love Drew McIntyre. That was, that was brilliant right there. Yeah, Legion of Doom. Paul Ellering, their uh, manager, is uh, is in WWE still. Yeah, great stuff on the cash-in last night with Damian Priest. People call him the bisexual undertaker. That was trending, I think, on Twitter last night. That is true, Tina. Heather, I did a podcast with Gary about uh, previewing WrestleMania. And I think we're going to do one talking about what happened after. That's right, we got a wrestling podcast on the brand now. Did you know that, Bubba? What? Did you know that I did a wrestling uh, podcast with Gary Cantrell? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, supposedly next WrestleMania, they're also trying to do the Hogan's retirement match. Oh, my God. I did Stone Cold. You know, Stone Cold's done. No, I'm just saying that's what, that's what... No, I know. It's, that's what they put out, that's what he... I don't want... Hogan doesn't need to... Against Stone Cold? So go? Stone Cold's not doing that. Let's go to it. <laughs> in Minnesota? Yeah, fuck yeah, I love Minnesota. It's my favorite. R.I.P. Drifter. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm like a Triple H, Shawn Michaels, The Rock, Steve Austin, Undertaker. Flair. Flair, yeah. Lesnar. I just, you know. Brooklyn Brawler. Yeah, just, I'm not really like a Hogan Macho Man guy. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good, Heather. I mean, I, I'm not, you know, if you like wrestling, which, you know, you do. Uh, Gary's the man. Gary uh, Wyndham. Oh, thanks, Steve. Good, good idea, man. <laughs> I should start thinking about that stuff more. Coco, beware. Yeah, Bret Hart. I mean, you like Bret Hart, but he's... Bret Hart's so salty... Now he hates he hates Ravage and Rick Rude. Rick Rude was good, yeah. Ted DiBiase. Yeah, Ted DiBiase. Bret Hart just you know if, it, if it's not technical wrestling, Bret Hart has a big problem with it. Marty Jannetty. Oh, thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. John, I'm not sure what that means, but thanks.
Make sure you subscribe to Bubba Army HQ. Otherwise, Bubba will have to take action. And there's a lot of power behind those short arms. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Now back to the BRN. Let me look how sexy that is. Whoa. For all you lawn dogs out there that does lawn maintenance, or you corporations that, you know, have long, big front yards and, you know, I mean, like there's some Fortune 500, like Google. I bet you they got a lot. I bet you Google has their own lawn maintenance department in itself or Facebook or something like that. And I guarantee you that they buy stuff like Skag and super industrial kick-ass stuff. And when it's time to seed... Or when it's time to, <clears throat> to, to, you know, lay down uh, pesticides or insecticides or weed killer or anything like that, you're gonna need you a Turf Storm XL, my friend. Look how sexy that is. That's nice. Seth, would you even know what to do with a Turf Storm XL? Yeah. Uh, what? What would you do? What I'd would you- call up my other lawn dog friends, and we would get out there, and we'd go to Google and mow those damn lawns. Well, it's with a. And then I'd fall off a ladder like Lum Lum. It's a uh, a turf storm doesn't mow. It, okay, well you said it, lawn dogs, so when you say lawn, I think mow. It. Fertilizers and and and, and for, fertilizers and you know pesticides and things like that. You know. I'm sure they have a lot of it in the Ocala at the horse farms. Meet the stand on spreader sprayer that's taking the industry by storm. You know, oh, yeah. Seth, the spreader sprayer, the thing that you've been wanting. Is this like watching the, the rocks turf intro storm. to you, Bubba? Yeah, like you, like <laughs> you, yeah, exactly you, you, you watching the rock intro. This is like the rock intro to me. <laughs> yes. Better than the Cubs Built intro. Built Skag Tough. Yeah. The Turf Storm is Hell a- yeah. Look at that. Wow. I can see myself in the back of that laying some seed. It's kind of Must slow. have tool for the serious landscape chemical oh, applicator. Look at that. And anyone looking to expand their lawn care offer. And the horsepower, <laughs> Bubba. You, you, need lot. The, you need that at the track. I, I'm getting one. Oh, nice. I think I'm getting one of these at the track. A and natu- it, even lays, it even lays down these little poofs of foam, so let me, you can t- so that you can tell what direction you've gone and like so you know. The grass fit for back. large commercial properties. The turf storm also makes itself at home see, while treating on. residential. Yeah, see, it, see, it throws yeah. down a little, a little. See, it throws down a little marshmallow, yep. so you don't go over the same spot twice. Nice. With right-sized liquid and dry capacities, the Turf Storm will help you get more done per day for maximum productivity and profitability. Hey, you like your stuff, I like my I stuff. Know, this I is just, like the rock promo to me. I, I I'm just, half hard on I this deal. I just want one so bad, Bubba. But, you know, you, you couldn't handle this, oh, buddy. Oh, please, that thing's 60 going gallons slower of than a liquid go-kart. capacity helps you keep working longer before having to refill. And the tanks are designed for quick and easy filling and draining. Oh, no charge? The fold-away spray boom allows for spraying widths of 2, 6, 8, or 10 feet. Yeah. And an optional foam. How about that foam layer, Lummy? Marker accessory is available. An auxiliary spray gun and 75. Yeah, say you need to go up to some flower beds and something. No big deal. I got a good hose for you. Make spot spraying. Oh, you flower beds need uh, some fertilizer too? No problem. Let me get off my machinery. I got my hose gimmick here. Accessing difficult areas a breeze. Is he a lawn dog? Spread dry materials up. Listen, there's rookie. This isn't, listen, for a portion of the the audience that's listened that's a rookie, this ain't for you. This is for really big time and through like 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 guys Aaron, like us like Aaron from Average Joe Long you yep. know like that exactly and, <clears throat> twenty five feet wide thanks to a high torque electric spreader mower accuracy and consistency of application are easy to maintain see but, these are real uh, see, uh, Seth these are real lawn dogs right here these are real professional lawn dogs even that kind of the gas mask that are clearly yeah. marked and located within easy reach. Yeah. Put those three up and let's go. Let's, start, let's start throwing some granular. Come on work now. done comfortably thanks to the Turf Storm's ergonomic drive controls, large cushion, oh. and spacious operator platform there with suspension. Go. Can you see Seth just up there like a man? Wow. To ensure long service life despite exposure to corrosive chemicals, critical structural components and hardware are made of stainless steel. That's right. Randy makes them of stainless steel there at Metal, metal Craft. Seth, uh, these go 8.5 miles an hour top speed. Yeah, Lummy. That's pretty fast. Yeah, it is. So for all you real lawn dog or, lo, out there that needs a spreader, cedar, pff, please, turf storm, skag, 
Uh, Mike's Lawnmower in Ocala, Lummy, is the number one Skag dealer in, in all of uh, Florida. That's Did you know that? No, that's awesome. And my new endorsement that I just picked up in Fort Walton Beach, Gus's Tractors. Yeah. Guess what? Skag? Skag, Skag dealer. Nice. That's right. Just picked him up as a sponsor, too. So when I talk about Gus's Tractor, Fort Walton Beach, it's where you can get your Skag stuff, too, if you want to get yourself a turf store and be cool like me. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yes, um, I listened last week. Uh, first time listener, I was uh, going through the dial and uh, I found you guys and I was listening. But I wanted to make a comment. Well, now um, hold on. I find because- you, I find you very interesting, ma'am, and I'd like to get a little information if I could, please. For <clears throat> first of sure. all, what city do do you listen to us? I'm in Kissimmee. Okay, so you and, you're, uh, you just you probably just found us on the newly formed Florida Man Radio on 103.1. Yeah. Perfect. And by the way, I to, have you heard the guy after me, the great Don Miller? He's good. Shannon Burks in the afternoon. Like, we got one hell of a radio station here. I know you do, and I don't usually listen to your radio station. Um, I am an uh, African-American female. Perfect. I, lo- I love that. Always, always voted Democrat. Right. Um, but my issue that prompted me to call in. I will continue to listen because I like to get information from everywhere. Right. But what prompted me to call in, I was quite upset by, I don't know if it was you, uh, because I, you know, I don't know everybody on the set there. Right. But I'm a retired, I'm a retired veteran of 39 years of government and army service. Thank you for your service. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I have, uh, cancer of the blood okay and i also i also have kidneys that do not work i'm going to my dialysis treatment as we speak okay and i have a multitude of other injuries um from so the what did, so, so what did we say that upset you because i i wouldn't think that anything we would say what, would upset you right what you what you said that upset or whoever said that upset me was when i see a person wearing a mask i feel like they are a dork well, well I, I have to wear a mask. I have to wear a mask, sir. Every single time I go out in public, I have no immune system pretty much left. I had to retire when COVID hit, even though I had 39 years of service. Well, ma'am, I had to retire. Well, well, first of all, let me tell you this. For people like in your situation, absolutely, I agree that you need a mask. And I apologize if what we said you took personally. But for the for the most part, most people, thank God, aren't suffering through what you are because it sounds like you're going through hell right now. And yes, you legitimately do need a mask. But most people don't suffer from your condition. And they're just wearing a mask to wear a mask because they think that wearing a mask still makes a difference. Now, for you, wearing a mask absolutely makes a difference. But for the, for the other 99%, they really, are, they really are dorks because you do need one and they do not. Right, and a lot of people that, that that I see with my cancer treatment or with my dialysis treatment, we all have to wear a mask. So when people are walking around, a lot of times I'll go places and I'm the, literally the only one with a mask, and people are looking at me, but I'm not going to spell out why I'm wearing the mask. I understand. So I think we should all be more graceful to, re- to think that, you know, there could be people that need that mask to save their lives. May I ask you a question? Yes. Do, do you wear your mask when you're in the car alone? No, I don't. Absolutely okay, well, that's the, that's what he meant. Yeah. When he's talking no. about dorks, that's that's really, he's not directing it towards people like you who need it because it's medically necessary. But the people that are yes. riding a bicycle by themselves or in their cars by themselves or wearing it right. in an airport who are not sick and they're, they're 19 or 25 years old, they're dorks. You're not. And unfortunately- God bless you for your service, and I'm so sorry you're going through all this. But that the context of okay, what he was I'm saying is a little, lot. little different. My doctor said I should be dead by now. But well, to um, me, to me, uh, you sound, God. to to me, you sound pretty spry and pretty kick ass, and you're dealing with a major curveball in life. Pretty, pretty, you know, pretty, pretty cool, uh, pretty well, I should say. I pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty, that's, pretty, that's, pretty well. That's, that's what my- and, understand. I made you kick ass. and more importantly, I appreciate that you found the show and I look forward 
to maybe you sticking with the show and realizing that we probably have some things that upset you, but it's different than anything else that you can find on the radio, point, counterpoint, and I appreciate you finding me. I really do. Thank you. Absolutely. I like to hear all points of view. I've always been that way. Um, years ago, for, for seven years straight, I used to listen to Rush Limbaugh on my 30-minute lunch break when I was working for uh, the VA. Oh, Rush would probably get you all lathered yeah, up, wouldn't I, he? <laughs> well, he, used to, he used to make my blood boil sometimes, yeah. but I like to listen, you know? But, you know, I appreciate a woman that says, I like to listen to all, you know, facets of an opinion, and even ones that I differ from, I like to, li- I find that refreshing. Instead of getting mad, you try to educate yourself as to what the other side may be saying. That's and right. there's a, not a lot of people that are as yeah. worldly and calm as you are, ma'am. So thank you for that. Thank you. And like I said, when Trump first announced, I, I, I've always voted Democrat. I'm an independent now. Um, but when Trump first announced years ago that he was going to run, I was for Trump. But then for me, the thing with Trump is I, I can't deal with the negativity. We don't need that. And it's just caused the country to be completely divided. Well, I would say I would say that we're in a lot of trouble as a country, regardless who the next president is. We're, we have yes. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who could really efficiently fix it and be the great candidate that everybody would like. But I'm concerned as to where we are, we're heading right now. And I don't know who the person that can fix it is. Because no one else can do what she just did, which is call somebody with a counter opinion and have an open, honest yeah. dialogue and respectful. Thank you. You're very for wor- calling. You're a very worldly woman. And I'd like for you from time to time when we we're when before the way before the show's over like it is now but you know in the earlier hours of the show which which what's just your first name joy j-o-y so i love it jo- joy from orlando our our our, our, our number yeah. our, our, our number i'm sorry joy from Kissimmee, our number one african-american listener in, in orlando number one yeah, i'm 62 years i'll be 62 in august so yeah, right. I'm, I'm a little bit more we would love, I'd love your insight, Joy, from Joy from Kissimmee. That's all we have to, that's, we'll know who we're talking to. So every once in a while, uh, earlier than now, pick up the phone and, and chime in. Tell us what you're liking, what you're not liking. I'd really appreciate that. Absolutely. We all adults. We, we should be able to do that. All right, Joy from Kissimmee. Good luck if you're headed to treatment right now, and I appreciate you calling in. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye Joy. Bye, Bye-bye. Joy. Boy, boy, that, That's, that was pretty kick-ass. That's sweetheart. Yes. That's awesome. 63, 62-year-old African-American woman, 39-year veteran of the U.S., you know, very, I think, what, working for the government. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, army, going army, going right. through hell right now. Uh, doesn't necessarily agree with everything that we say, but is, you know... Is listening. Finds it cool enough that we're the only one out there throwing some type of crazy opinion out there. And thank you know what? Thank you, Joy. Appreciate you. Uh, we got an after show that we'll do a podcast here momentarily. Let's call it let's call it twenty after. Okay. Great. Perfect. You'll be able to find that on all pla- uh, podcasting platforms: uh, iHeart, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, or Bubba Army HQ. Uh, we'll put that up here by like two o'clock. Appreciate y'all, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for letting me finish. You've been listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show, starring me, Bubba the Love Sponge, co-host and show historian, Lummox, co-host, Anna Hummel, co-host, Dr. Dan Diaco Esquire of Council, co-host, J. Diaco Esquire, the Spitting Cobra of Council, Brett, the Filthy Ginger video editor. Yeah, back here wearing shit up. It's Mini Macho. The BRN agent, Thomas Buttoned Up Bean. And for everything else, go to TheBubbaArmy.com. Now, time for the legal disclaimer. Exactly. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this show without express written consent of the Bubba Radio Network is prohibited. We must dissuade him of this delusion. Until next time, always remember. I'll repair the love.